Series 16, gents. Back three months off, and we've come back at the dinner table. That will wank. We've gone Thai. First trip in a way in a while, and we've gone Thai. There's so much vegetables in my meal then, right? But more than what I had on a Sunday dinner. Fucking crap. And just round the corner, nip to the shop before Surrey's best Chinese, as voted for by the Surrey Times. Still an empty plate. That's what I love about them. He'll plough through and just finish it anyway. First episode of the series, I know what you're thinking. Everybody enjoyed them, uh, the intros, didn't they? Uh, but we're going in sharp. Okay. <laughs> Do you like that? You like it? We're going in sharp. But don't fear not. Fear not, because we're, we're going with an outro to this series. We're not just going, we're coming in. Excuse me. Straight through me. So, that. Straight some, some things never change. <laughs> Intro, outro, that tag was straight through me. <laughs> we are coming in sharp with Lee Sharp. Lee Sharp. First episode, series 16. So we've got Man United, Leeds, Bradford, Sampdoria, Sampdoria mm -hmm. Portsmouth, Portsmouth as well. Love Island. I beat it, miss. <laughs> That will probably his best bit of his career for you, weren't it? What do you think? Oh, Lee Sharp. Oh, oh Lee. 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 <laughs> Back in the day, she was number one. Should we get Lee in? Mm -hmm. Could we do a food review as well? Crap. And he's next to you. Yeah. John? Crap. The combination starter were crap. The duck were all right. Mine? No. Why is it bad it was? No, we're hungry. Looks, <laughs> looks disgusting, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on, Sharp. You're probably not looking at it. Crap. Please, Sharp. <laughs> what? Just this research here. You're <laughs> coming in with it? Yeah. Reality TV star, Celebrity Love Island, Dancing on Ice, Minor Role in Coronation Street, Lee Sharp Fan Club, Good Looking Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with football. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with that. And all correct. <laughs> All correct as well. Uh, no, the, the uh, small part in Coronation Street's not right. Is it not? No, I don't know where that came from. I know Viv Anderson was a massive Coronation Street fan. And I think, uh, if I'm right, he had a little small part. I think he was a taxi driver in, in one episode. Right. But I never watched it, was never into it, was never on it. You've not pulled us up on Good Looking Bastard, though. No, you've gone with that one. Keep that in. Keep that in. <laughs> yeah. And still, I think my mum wrote that one. What's that? Still good looking. Oh, you reckon? Yeah. I think it's this big... son's doing well for you. Yeah, it's working. That's the it? nicest thing he's ever said to yeah. any guest. <laughs> <laughs> he's got me fucking four days in Alicante. <laughs> <laughs> A work trip. Stopping off in Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying I'm... it over here. Yeah, love it, mate. The, the, as I said, the, the lifestyle's amazing. I've got two little kids, a five and a six year old, so they're absolutely loving it. We were at a house party last night, pool party, the kids were in the pool for five hours. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the only downfall over here really uh, is, is just the Spanish sort of bureaucracy, trying to get things done and working. Nobody wants to work over here, nobody wants to get anything done. So things just take forever, but other than that, the actual lifestyle is, is brilliant. Is it a pro golfer now, is that what? You'd be classed Yeah, as. well, I, I, I turned pro by accident in the UK. I'm not officially a pro in Spain, so I'm trying to go through the process of turning pro over here. Um, by accident? Yeah, I, I, was, I was playing as an amateur because I was a low handicap amateur. I was playing in some pro events, and then I rang up to enter one, one event, and they said, oh, we've got no amateurs, but if you pay a bit extra, you can just play as a pro. And I was like, well, that was sort of the goal to go get there, but there's no way I'm good enough at the moment, so I ended up just paying me money. And then once you've paid your money and played as a pro for money, you can't then play as an amateur. So that sort of stopped me amateur status in the UK, but I'm still an amateur yeah. here for some bizarre reason. This might be a, sound a really daft question, but are you proper decent at golf? Uh, I'm all right, I'm off scratch. Right. But there's a difference between scratch and- Plus five and all plus that. Plus five, yeah. plus six European tours. I mean, seniors I'm looking at, so um, it's not, the feels not quite as strong as the European tour. Right, so that he's fucking, he's 104, isn't he, Bernard Langer? And he still pisses it every week, doesn't he? On yeah, the old he's, he's, he's ridiculous. He's a robot, isn't he? He is ridiculous. But yeah, so, so it's just, it's all part of getting there, you know, to, to try and get the European tour seniors is, is where I'm aiming. It's a long shot. Um, and there's a lot of things I've got to do with my golf game, but 
I love practicing, I love playing. Gives me an excuse for the missus, I've got to go and practice and play. Wow. It's my job. It's my yeah. job. <laughs> Pro. Exactly. Just like this for us, it's his job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to go and do it, haven't you? It was hard work getting a trip that Alicante signed off, wasn't it? <laughs> nah. <laughs> We're working. <laughs> How did you end up down at Torquay then from Dudley? That's, that's another sort of accidental lucky break. I was, I was at Birmingham City as a, as a schoolboy from 15 to 16. They let me go at 16. They said, you've got, um, you've got the ability. We think you lack the aggression to be a top flight player. So they let me go. That was Kevin Reeves that used to be at City who looked after the schoolboys at the time. So they let me go. I had a, a trial at West Brom. They said no, as a centre forward, funnily enough. I was due to have a, a trial at Wolves but they weren't having the trials until the 1st of July. And in the meantime, some of my mates that I played Sunday league with, they played in a, dif a different uh, school district. Their granddad knew a guy from Birmingham who had moved down to Torquay, who worked for the local supermarket that supplied the club with food. So he said, can some of these lads come? Yeah, it was a fucking, it's like an <laughs> unbelievable link. <laughs> so they, they went down for a trial. There's about eight of them went down for a trial. I think four of them got invited back for a second trial. In the meantime, I'd been let go by Birmingham. So they said, oh, can we bring our mate down? So I went down with them um, and got offered a YTS. And the YTS started on the 1st of July when the Wolves trial was going to be. So I just, I, I sort of had to take the, the, the offer. So I ended up at Torquay through a supermarket workout through my mate's granddad. Played three games in three days and they offered me a YTS. I think it was just before the end of the season that we went down there for the trial because Torquay were bottom of the league and they could have got relegated. So if they'd have got relegated, we wouldn't have had the YTS. Right. And into in the, the end, conference. Into yeah, the into the conference, yeah. yeah. And in the end, uh, the last game of the season, I think they needed, might have needed a draw to stay up or something. And they were losing and the ball went off the pitch and the Torquay player went running off to get it quick and there was a policeman with a police dog and the police dog thought the player was going after the policeman, so bit the player. <laughs> and the play got stopped for like eight or nine minutes for the lad to get treatment on his bite. And they scored the equaliser in the extra time. So I was that close to being, having, actually not having a job. And this guy scored I in the time. I bet he got a few extra Borneos, didn't he? Cheers, big yeah. yeah. You know I mean? So the manager got sacked and Cyril Knowles came in, the old Tottenham left back which was really good for me because he, he, had, he had a different sort of level of knowledge of football. And I was going to say, what was it like playing in that fourth division as a tricky, tricky winger? Did you get it was brutal. targeted? Yeah, well, it was brutal. I, I was playing open age when I was 15. So I was used to playing against men as a, as a kid sort of thing. And then got down to Torquay. Cyril Knowles realised a few of the apprentices were a little bit lightweight and a little bit weak. So he used to play murder ball. He used to play first years versus second. Um, on a little old concrete car park. He used to put two five-a-side pitches either end and say, right, there's only one rule and that's no punching. So we all just used to like kick 10 barrels of shit out of you. So you, you sort of got used to work, using your elbows and getting kicked and kicking back. And so it toughened a few of us up, but it was, it was brutal. See, I'm six foot four and I'm still hiding in corners in that, yeah. in that game. Yeah, it, it, it was horrible. I mean, Cyril Knowles was so aggressive. The amount of fights he nearly got into training when he was like ragdolling people and the manager? Yeah. Oh, it was Ragdoll's place. Centre halves, because he, he was always against the centre halves. He was like, he'd be Ragdolling, he'd be nutmegging them. He had the sweetest left foot I've ever seen. And the bloke was like mid 40s, overweight, and was still the best player on my pitch in training. Sounds a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you only played 14 games before? Yeah. You were I, th I think I probably only started about seven. So do you think that's, you know, talking about Birmingham releasing you, not tough enough? A lot must have changed in that time at Torquay. You've been released, gone to Torquay, and then all of a sudden, Man yeah, I United think, are well, interested. I think, I think murder ball certainly helped. Yeah. I think probably, probably showing that you can play in the fourth division as a 16-year-old kid probably helped. When, was, when did you first realise of the interest from United? You say you only started seven, because they must have been in touch before no, no, that. No, that, that, there, was, there was nothing. So, so uh, I, don't think, I, I think, I, think I, dro I got dropped out of the squad. I think I was in the squad and travelled, but didn't really play. And then it was after Christmas, it was like February time. I started playing again um, and it was like February, March time that um, we played a game on a Friday night. Um, I went back to the digs, didn't know anything about it. Um, and then there's footsteps coming out the, up the digs, up the corridor, knock on my door. I don't know what you've been doing. 
or where you've been, but the manager and club secretary downstairs, like half one in the morning. So I sit downstairs, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like, uh, we've just been driven around Torquay for the last hour and a half, back of a Jaguar with Alex Ferguson and Archie Knox. They're not leaving Torquay till they shake your hand in the morning. They want to take to Manchester United. So I'm like, fucking, where's that come from? Like, out of nowhere. And Fergie came in, he went, listen, he said, you've got good lines. He said, you're tall. He said, you are very skinny at the moment, but you'll fill out. He said, you can see you're an athlete, you're quick. He said, you took a couple of whacks around the head and, and a couple of chunky challenges. He said, but you just seemed to get up and carry on. You weren't, you weren't particularly bothered. He said, so you've got everything that we look for. He said, we'll, we'll stick you in reserves for, reserves for a couple of years and hopefully we'll turn what, you into when, a No, once he's left, like the, your digs, like you sat in your room, what are you, what's going through your head? Like, well, I, 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 went into, I went into the living room first. So the landlady, her mate was, was seeing one of the players from Torquay, a, a lad called Dave Caldwell, who was six foot four, Glaswegian, got sent off five times the season I was there. Just an absolute fucking head banger. Um, but, but a really good lad. So I walked in, he went, right, sit down, son, who's in for you? I said, how do you know? He said, it's two o'clock in the morning. Manager and secretary, don't come around unless it's important. Who's in for you? I said, it's fucking Manchester United, isn't it? He said, right, I've got a bit of advice for you. He said, you go up there, you ask for this, this, and this. So they don't give you that, you ask for this, this, and this. So if they don't give you that, you ask for this, this, and this, they don't give you that, fuck it. Just sign anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Solid advice. Oh, yeah, cheers, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Agent now. And were there any negotiations or it basically, that's, None. that's your... No, it was just like, you're just going. I rang my dad, because my dad had been down to the game with my mum. No mobile phone, so I, I ring the house phone. And uh, I said, Dad, he's like, you all right? It's like, you know, half two in the morning. I was like, yeah, yeah. I said, I've just had the, the manager around. I said, uh, I've got to go and see Alex Ferguson tomorrow morning. They want to take me to Manchester United. And I was expecting my dad to go, oh, well done, son. Just deathly silent on the end of the phone. For like 20 seconds, I'm like, Dad? Dad? He's like, yeah, yeah. He said, you know, I'm just a bit concerned. He said, um, you're sort of making a name for yourself. You're getting in the team. You're playing regular. You know, you could go up there and just get swallowed up and, and never seen again. He says, I'm just a little bit concerned. I went, Dad, I've got to go. He's like, oh, no, I know you've got to go. He said, I'm just, just thinking, running through things yeah, through head. Head. That's good, though, I think. Yeah, I like, yeah, good... yeah, I can no, see that's... where you're coming from. He's like, well, yeah, he said, absolutely brilliant. He said, let us know how it goes. So. so did you say you went in with the youth team when you first got up there? I went into the reserves because I signed pro. I, was, I wasn't an apprentice, so I signed pro. I was in the reserve team dressing room. Um, so played with uh, sort of Fergie's fledglings, he used to call them. So there's like Mark Robbins, Daniel Graham, Russell Beersmore, Lee Martin. Um, Graham Hogg was there at the time. Uh, Chris Turner was the goalie. I mean, in the first team, they had like Jasper Olsen, Gordon Strachan, Norman Whiteside, Robbo. Um, so it was a pretty strong first team dressing room at the time. Was he always on the lookout? You know, because he made the trip down to Torquay and did he take an interest in you? basically pushing you to, to get in with the first team. This is Ferguson. No, no, no. He was, he was never a pushy to, to sort of get you integrated into the first team. He, he knew everybody. So, so the schoolboys would turn up um, school holidays and he knew the parents' name, he knew the kids' name. Uh, he went watching the A team, the B team, the reserves. Uh, he, he ran the club top to bottom. He was, he was a workaholic, Fergie. He, he was non-stop. I I'm guessing he was never at home. He would watch a reserve team game. He'd watch an A team game on a Saturday morning. He would watch, uh, and then he would be going out, out watching teams that were due to play to do his own recce. Um, to be fair, though, he, looks, he looks a miserable bastard, doesn't he? So I'm sure his wife were like, "Yeah, you'll go and watch another yeah, game." Yeah. <laughs> well, I, th I think he's a bit under the thumb at home. Is he? Is he? Yeah, I think. I think he, <laughs> he's like, "B team are playing tonight. You're not going down." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, get, he gets to shout at people when he's out, but he gets shouted at when yeah. he's out. <laughs> it's fucking pretty much the same as us all. Really. <laughs> same as everybody, yeah. We're all the same. <laughs> We've heard a lot about that relationship he has with parents. Did he? Were you, did your mum and dad go down when you initially went down having the? Them yeah, talks. yeah. I mean, he, he was he was really good with my mum and dad. Um, he, he was really friendly. He was just with me. He wasn't friendly. He was alright <laughs> with my mum and dad, though. Yeah, he, he, I mean, he was when when you first get there. He, you know, everybody says when you sign for Fergie, you just feel like a million dollars. You know, yeah. I, I mean, it took me. I was a seventeen year old kid when I was sixteen when I first went up, and he's, he he met me off the train at Piccadilly Station. He didn't send a driver with a name placard. It was him at the at the bottom of the platform. Uh, took me around to Old Trafford. 
He introduced me to all the, the restaurant staff and all the secretarial staff, and this is our new signing. And I'd come for like 200 grand from, as a 16-year-old kid from Torquay, and I was getting paraded around the ground as I was a five million pound signing. Yeah. Um, so it does make you feel like you're Special. at home. It, it does make it feel like a family club. Um, so it is really warming. It's then when you've got your name signed on the dotted line, is that it then starts yeah. getting into your ribs. Uh, what were your <laughs> actual realistic expectations? Uh, just a, a couple of years in the reserves. I, ne I never even dreamt to the first team. Uh, and when I got there, I realised how far off I was from everybody else. I, I was walk, you know, we, we were going into training. We'd get there 15, 20 minutes before training. There's lads pinging balls around and they're flushing it. Ball's coming up around here somewhere, the leg's up here, they're bringing it down with the outside of the boot. The first touch is immaculate. I've got a pair of Adidas trampette on and fucking balls down all over the place. And I'm like, oh my God, I just don't belong here. So you just have to knuckle down, work on your first touch, work yeah. on, you got lads tutting at you and I can call you the fuck's this turned off. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you've come in as the- Fuck off back to Turkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. You've come in as the highest pay, most money paid for a YTS player at that point at United. Apparently so, yeah. So eyes but, are on I, you, I, I, I didn't. I didn't see a fee. I didn't know the fee. Yeah. Um, so you didn't. The pressure was. Yeah. That, the, uh, the, I didn't. I didn't really feel a pressure apart from what I was putting on myself and to get up to the standard of, of yeah. what was in the dressing room already. Yeah. The tuts and the fucking okay, this coming this useless. <laughs> so and so and all that and you just shit yourself around them. Well, you know. Well, you know those first few days like starstruck a little bit. Oh, right? massive. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. yeah. Um, for for weeks you're like that. Yeah. You still get to know the place. You. But to go from Torquay, where we had our own, we used to wear our own training kit. So you got your own training kit. You took it back to the digs once a week to wash it. So it's getting dirtier and dirtier, depending on how muddy the pitches have been or how sweaty it's been because it's been hot. You're training the same kit all week, then take it back to your digs to wash it at the end of the week. Whereas Torquay, you turn, uh, United, you turn up, you've got your own squad number, your own little kit rolled in a towel, your sweatshirt and your jogging bottoms on your, on your peg, your boots under your bench. It's just like, this is just a, good it's, it's a different game you're playing. Yeah. How long was it from when you signed to your first team debut? Not long. I think it was like September. So they were struggling for left backs. So then Colin Gibson was injured. Uh, again, injuries get you in. And uh, she must have done all right then. And then, you know, you're talking about your touch and you need yeah, well, to, uh, them touch. I, I, obviously, I was a left winger. And then we played a practice game at the training ground. And for the last 15, 20 minutes of the, train, the, the practice game, Brian uh, Whitehouse, Morris, Whitehouse, Morris, I can't remember his name now. He went, oh, just go and play left back for the last 20 minutes and show the gaffer what you can do. So I played 20 minutes at left back. He was like, all right, okay, well done. And then I come off, that was on like the Tuesday. And on the Thursday, manager comes to me and said, how are you feeling? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. And then on the Friday, he comes to me and said, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play you tomorrow. Left back, West Ham. And, and, the, and the manager's come to me and said, listen, you're playing against Mark Ward today. He said, uh, he's not going to do you for pace. He said, but he can, he can be a bit nasty, so, so just protect yourself in tackles. He said, you shouldn't have any problem. Didn't any of the lads look after you in that Robbo, regard? Robbo always, yeah. Yeah. Robbo was just, as soon as anybody... Because when, when we did, when I was in the team, there was only me, Giggsy, and Ch Kinchelskis. We could take a kick in all day long, but we could never hurt someone back that had kicked us. So if someone hadn't sorted out someone that was kicking us by half time, the managers and what fuck he's he's been fucking booted all over the place and none of you fuckers have sorted it out. Oh, so they got the blame for yeah, yeah, responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, they're like, right, we'll sort it, we'll sort it. <laughs> so you'd have like Paul Ince, Roy Keane, Mark Hughes, Brian Robson, right, we'll we'll sort this out. And the manager that gives you a bit more confidence if they've got your back. The manager that, that would openly list. say you've let him down. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've not like, fucking he's, he's getting kicked all over the place. Why has it not been Protect sorted? Him. They're like, oh right, okay, we'll 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 on the case. <laughs> and they would just smash people. <laughs> when, back in the day when you could smash people. If you got a kick as well, would you like look at Robbo and just... Yeah, you just laugh at him. <laughs> just go, I, know, I know what's coming. <laughs> I know what's coming. You're it's like it. big brother, little brother, isn't it? I've, yeah. just, I've, I've had a crack at That's school. It. Can you sort it out? Yeah, That's no it. problem. <laughs> Who was your wingman at this time? Were you, were you going out and when you started getting into the team? When I first got there, 17, 18, uh, it was sort of more... Reserves, really. The, the first team lads were a bit older. I weren't knocking around with them. A lot of them had wives and kids. So it was more the reserves. It was more, it was knocking around with them. People, lads from the digs, really. Um, so we had Mark Bosnich was in our digs. 
Uh, Sean Gota, I roomed with in our digs. And there were a couple of others. Wayne Bullimore was, was a, a, the sweetest left foot. He didn't quite make it at United. He went to Barnsley, I think. Yeah, he did. I, um, I didn't even realise Gota or Bosnich came through at United. Yeah. Yeah, because I think yeah. he's the only player he signed twice, Bosnich. Right. Well, up to, yeah. Because he came early and then he left. Yeah, so, so Bosnich, because he came from Australia, couldn't get a work permit. So he was only on expenses as a as a as like a, a trialist. So Bozzy was uh, <laughs> Bozzy, what a character Bozzy was. So Bozzy got in with all the gangsters because we we, <laughs> we we stayed in Salford, and Bozzy got in with all the gangsters. Uh, and I was I was in one digs not with Bozzy. Then I moved out of digs to get my own house when I was in the first team. And then the manager kicked me out of my own house and put me back in digs. <laughs> kicked it out of your own house. Yeah, because I was playing shit. Oh. So, so I was 18, I'd been in the team for a year. I said, listen, I hate the digs. There was 12 of us in the digs. Fe feeding time was just like fucking carnage. <laughs> feeding time. And because I was, because I was in digs, I, I was going, my dad had a macro, <laughs> macro card. So I was going to macro, buying big boxes of sweets and chocolates and, and I'd go away for an away game and come back the next night and everything had just been savaged by all the lads. There was no privacy at all. So they'd necked all my sweets and necked all everything <laughs> I'd bought. So I was like, I need to get out of the So 18, I'd been in the team for a year. I was like, I want to buy my own house. Um, I've been going out with my girlfriend since I was 12 at, at school. I said, so she wants to move up and get a job and we're going to get a little house somewhere. He's like, right. He said, you're a bit young. He said, I like people staying digs a bit longer. He said, because you've been in the first team, that's okay. He said, but if your form suffers, you're straight back straight in digs. Back. I was like, yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. So she came up, come up about six months later. Well, at Anfield, I'm 18. Remember, I've been in the team for 18 months. I'm 18, I'm still a kid. I have no idea what, what fucking day it is, what I'm doing, why I'm there, whatever. And when at Anfield, we come in at half time and he just rips into me. You, you little fucking shit. You can't fucking run, you can't fucking edit, you can't fucking pass it. Your fucking girlfriend's going back to Birmingham. You're back in fucking digs. You're selling your car, you're fucking selling your dog. Fucking, you're useless. <laughs> Dog. Dog get out, on. Get out, get out there. I'm not speaking going to have to fucking go. Get I'm sorry, and, son. Get out there and show me you can play. And as he's bollocking me, I'm sort of sliding down the seat like <laughs> Anfield of all places. I went out and had a shitter second half and he dragged me with about 20 minutes to go. I had to go home. Tell her she had to go home. I was back in digs. So I swapped digs and ended up with Bozzy in my digs. So, you, so your missus at the time had to literally yeah. move back to Birmingham? Yeah. You when was it with her? When yeah. was it that he came to the house? Huh? When, was, when was it when he turned up at your house? That was uh, about 18 months later. That was, that was a different house. Oh, so you'd, you'd done your YTS again in the digs and you're so, allowed so, to get your own house yeah, again? Yeah, so, so 18, halfway through the year, I went back into digs, which is when I was with Bozzy. Bozzy got involved with the, with the gangsters of Salford. Um, and I went in his room one night and he just had fucking boxes of camcorders and tellies. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm on my own expenses. I've got to earn some money somehow. So I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to knock these out to the lads. <laughs> 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 Unbelievable. I had Sean go to the first digs, who obviously from Bermuda felt the cold. So we're in, we're in this uh, terraced house and the landlady had bought the terraced house next door. So she lived one side and all the lads lived the other. And we had the front room, which used to be a, a, a living room. So we had a gas fire in there with two single beds and a wardrobe. And I'd go away for a game. I'd come back at like one, two in the morning after traveling and go to be there with two pairs of jogging bottoms on, a pair of thermal socks, two hoodies, a pair of gloves, woolly hat, sat in front of the full electric fire. Like, I'm <laughs> fucking freezing it. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. It's like the <laughs> Incredible. You can tell us that one when he did turn up, when you and Giggs were back at yours. Oh, that was, that was a, so, so at 19, so at 19, at 19, I got in the team and started the season well. I scored the Attrick at Ivory, scored the winner at Everton, uh, got in the England squad. Um, so I said, uh, he came to me and said, oh, we're going to give you a new contract. I went, right, OK. I said, um, I need to move out of Diggs. I need my own house. He went, oh, are you sure? I was like, yeah, I've got to get out of Diggs. I said, it's fucking murder. I said, the, it's killing me. The food's terrible. I said, there's no privacy. You got an England cap and you're still in Diggs? Yeah. It's so, actually mad that you've got to ask, isn't it? I know. Yeah. yeah. I, said, I, said, I, I said, I'm not signing unless... I get to move, get to get my own house. So he's like, right, okay, no problem. So I go and buy this house, a new build, sort of Barrett or Red Row, whatever it was. And Giggs is still living at home. All the young lads are in digs. Giggs' mates are still living at home. I think I was about 19, coming up to 20 maybe. So Giggsy rings me 
Uh, lads are on about having a couple of beers. We don't play till Sunday. This is Thursday night. So by the letter of the law, you've got 48 hours, haven't you? But you are training on the Friday? Training on the Friday. Um, and it is, I, can, I, think it was, I think it might have even been Liverpool on the Sunday. So it was not ideal, really. Um, so Giggsy turns up uh, with three girls that are not supposed to be there, three or four of his mates. Um, six or seven of the, the young lads come down, apprentices, knock on the door, 10 o'clock, half 10. We're, we're getting ready to go out and um, knock at the door. I'm fucking doing my barnet upstairs. And one of the lads runs upstairs and says, you'll never guess what. Fucking manager's downstairs. I went, no, no, no. I said, it's not. I said, I know what you mean. I said, it's a taxi driver that looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know, I know what you think. I said, he, he, he gets me every time. I said, but... <laughs> I said just, just go and jump in the cab. I said, we need to be there by half 10. So the guy from that says, no, no, I'm telling you, it's the manager. So I sort of peer over the stairs and the manager's got his scarlet face on with bits of froth in the corner of his mouth and the white knuckles. Sharp, get your fucking ass down these stairs. Get in that living room with that gigs. Get every one of these fuckers out this house. I want a word with you two. So I'm like, oh, your stomach sinks to fucking your big toe, done it? And I'm like, oh God. Tell you know what the worst thing would be if the knock on the door and it was the taxi driver who looked like Alex. <laughs> yeah. Not tonight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, and he just sat there. He, he stood by the front door, booted everyone up the backside and smacked them around the back of the head and told them where to go. There were lads diving out of windows, under beds, <laughs> into wardrobes. It was something like a carry-on film. And, uh, and he sat me and Giggsy down and just give us the bollocking of our lifetime. And I was sat in the armchair there. Giggsy was on the end of the couch there. And he's over to me, in, in my face like that. The knuckles are behind him. I'm thinking, he's just going to swipe me any time now. He's just going to swipe me. And I'm, and I'm like that. And as he's, he's like right up against my face and he's spitting and frothing. The fucking steam's coming off his face. <laughs> fucking, you can't fucking run. You can't fucking pass it. You're fucking letting your teammates down. You're letting your fucking family down. This and then he's over to Giggsy. You're letting your fucking family down. You're letting your fucking mum down. This, that, and the other. Blah, blah. And there's double doors through to my dining room, where I've got a big sparkly set of drums. I haven't got a dining room table. <laughs> and as he's bollocking, he's saying, "And then what? The, what the fuck? Are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Every drums, fucking drums. <laughs> I'll give you fucking drums." <laughs> Nine o'clock tomorrow morning, you're both in my fucking office. I'm like, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. How did he know? How did he know to turn up? Well, this is the thing. We had no, I had no idea until about 12 months ago, and someone told me it was Giggsy's mum. Oh. Giggsy's mum had rang him and said, I'm not sure what you're up to, Mr. Ferguson, but our Ryan and a load of his mates have just gone round to Sharpies. Should so he, he was at a dinner in Southport, apparently, a black tie dinner. And he put his knife and fork down halfway through his dinner, put his knife and fork down and went, sorry. Got to go, I've got a problem with one of my players. <laughs> and drove straight around my house and booted everybody. It fucking ruined the night for us, to be fair. <laughs> you like that? It's in your face, like, yeah. like yeah, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it now. <laughs> did you play on the Saturday? Uh, the Sunday? No, Giggsy did. I was sub. Were you and good for... mates? You and yeah, Giggsy? Yeah, I was around with Giggsy for a bit, yeah. Because obviously he was. He's coming through and the, the spotlight put on him. He's coming up behind you and, and they were talking about the next George Best and everything yeah, at that yeah. time, weren't they coming through the ranks? Yeah, we knocked around for a bit. Yeah. We went out for a bit. I knocked around with him and his mates. His mates were good lads. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we knew. You always know at a club, don't you, when a, when a good young lad's coming through. So yeah. we knew about Giggsy when, when he was 13, 14. The same with Bex. Um, Bex was always around the dressing room, school holidays and... He was there with his dad. Every time he played in London, he was, he was in the dressing room with his dad. So we knew about Bex before, before most people. So yeah, you, you know these people are coming in. By the way, you must be one of the only people, one of the only footballers Roy Keane speaks well of. Yeah, <laughs> can't right. be many, can they? Keane was amazing. I love Keane. I think I'm probably the only footballer that he's ever knocked around with that he's never had a fallout with. He's, he's had fallouts and arguments and tantrums with, with everybody I know. And for some reason, I don't, know, I don't know why, because I'm the sort of player, if I played anywhere else, he would loathe and detest me because of what I stood for. Because I stood for entertainment, fun, smiley. Um, he, was, he, was, he was a total opposite to me, but I suppose I took, I don't, I don't think I took him under my wing, but I, I looked after him a little bit when he first got there, took him out when he first got there. He was, he was aggressive and, and quite a, and a nasty drunk at times. I looked, him, looked after him in certain situations and put him in cabs and sent him home and got him out of trouble. So I think he, he sort of appreciated that. 
we sat next to each other in the training ground. We, we went out loads. Um, he was he was different class, Keeney. Absolutely loved him. You tell the one with the watch because he's he's told it on another one. <laughs> yeah, the what the watch story was. Again, he come into training. He was like, oh, I've, I've, uh, the hotel's been robbed when he was away with Ireland. He says, so I've just had a insurance policy come through. I've just got five grand into my bank for my Rolex. And the lads tell me, you know, a jeweler. I was like, yeah, yeah, so I, know, I know a jeweler. I think it was Robinson's in, in Manchester. You'd think it'd be a Bosnich who'd know the uh, jeweler, wouldn't you? Like, <laughs> yeah. Jimmy the jeweler, we'd we'll, we'll see him down. Yeah, he, he probably had a few watches himself, to be fair, <laughs> was he? Um, and we just took him out, took him in after training. We went in this little room downstairs, had a cup of tea. Lad put 10 Rolexes out. He's like, I want a Rolex. And he's like, I don't want one too big. My wrist's a bit skinny, this, that, and the other. So he's trying all the Rolexes on. He went, he went which one do you reckon? So I'm like, come on, Kenny, the lads are waiting. They're all in the pub Tuesday afternoon. I was like, the lads are waiting in the pub. Just buy a watch. Um, just, just buy a watch. Buy a watch, man. <laughs> that's, that's what we are. He's like, well, like, which one do you reckon? I was like, well, I said, I'm not really into gold jewelry. I said, but the gold one with the white face, gold Rolex Daytona. Uh, I said, the gold one with the white face looks the best on you. So it's, he was just thinking, I'll just tell him anyone just because yeah, we can get out well, quicker. He did. I was like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even look at the prices because I weren't buying. He's like, yeah, yeah, I do like it. And then he said to my mate, the Jew, he said, what do you reckon? He went, yeah, he said, the gold watch, the gold one. He said, I'm, not, I'm like, Sharpie, I'm not into gold watches. He said, but the gold one with the white face, it's the best watch there. It suits your skin tone, right, right size face. <laughs> It's like, it's given all is, the is, is, I've never really been watch shopping. Is all it, the salesmen spill. Is your skin tone Suits your skin tone. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a right size face. Uh, he said, that, that's the best watch there. He went, oh yeah, go on, fuck it. I'll have this one. He said, here's my credit card. Box it up. We'll finish this cup of tea. And we're going to see the lads. I went, yeah, well done, Kenny. Good decision. <laughs> so, the, so the lad takes it up to clean the watch up and, and box it up with his credit card. He says, he's fucking hell, Sharpie. Your man's top man. I'm like, that's so unusual for Kenny to be talking good about someone that he doesn't know. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's a good lad, but why would you say that? It's like, fucking got a business, he's trying to make a profit, put 10 watches out there for me, and out of all of them, he's told me to have the cheapest one. I said, you're taking a piss, aren't you? He went, no, no, 1,200 quid for that watch. I said, it's fucking 12 grand, you daft bastard, what are you talking about? <laughs> His face went scarlet, he went, whatever you do, don't tell the lads. I've only just signed, they're going to think I'm a right flash bastard. <laughs> I went, Keeney, you said, your secret's safe with me, don't worry. <laughs> Photos of watches and clocks in the dressing room next morning. Everybody <laughs> asking him the time. He got caned for it. I think he's still got it now. It's probably worth about twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, he's out by ten thousand oh, eight hundred pound on the over watch. Over ten grand, yeah. He's like, thank God we signed on fees. Got him. My card had bounced. <laughs> like, well, well, I couldn't have helped you out there with ten grand. But yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> but he, he was he was funny. I mean, Keeney, you know, Keeney. He's what you see is what you get. He's, he's straight down the line, no messing about. Um, he's, he's very black and white. Um, did you ever see him go? It was a Schmeichel. Had you left by this point when he had a fight with Schmeichel? Yeah, when he had the fight with Schmeichel, I'd gone. Yeah. Did you ever see him? Go. They, they were always, they were always at it. They were always bickering. Um, I think he, I think he was always of the thing because because Big Pete used to come out and bollock and and, and shout, and he was all. Kenny's like, you're doing that for the crowd. And we'll go back to ask that. He said, he said, he said I'm, I'm not interested. He said, if you want to fight and you want to argue, he said, do it in here and we'll have it. He said, I'll, I'll have it with you. He said, not a problem. He said, but don't do it out there in front of me. Bruce was the same. Bruce was like, don't start doing this out there, waving your arms and shouting. He said, because it's just for show. So if you've got a problem, we'll deal with it in here. And I think it was building up and building up with, with Schmikes. And then I think a couple of, I think it might have been a couple of 50 50 tackles. Ian Wright always sort of did Schmeichel. And I think I think he, he he might have shirked a couple of challenges or did something, and Keeney just lost it and went after him. You said he because he didn't him and Pallister used to be close, and then just yeah, that was that was I, I was with him for that. I mean, Keeney was doing my head in. At that, at that. <laughs> 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 I threatened I threatened to hit Keeney myself that night. But, you know, so we we were on a lads trip close close season. I won't go too much into it because I don't know whether they get a bit embarrassed about it, but um, we we. We'd gone mid-season for, for a summer break and we'd been given licence to have a drink and we, we went out at like two in the afternoon, ended up in some dodgy bar in, in Benus at four in the morning when you just, you can't speak properly. You've been mm. on it for 14 hours. It's like, and me, Pally and Keeney just sat there and Pally's like, right, I've had enough, I'm going to go home. And Keeney just starts laying into him. Go on, you pussy, go and ring your missus. Go on, you <laughs> woman, go on, you soft ass. Keeney. It's four o'clock in the morning. There's nothing going on here. We've had a good, we've had a good, we've had a good look at it. 
just leave me alone. It's like, ah, go on, fuck off, get back to your missus, under the thumb, this and the other. Pally walks out, so it all gets left. And within three minutes of Pally leaving, Kitty's like that. Shall we go? <laughs> like, Looked at the Rolex, it's time to go. <laughs> he just caned him for leaving now. He's like, oh no, He's, he just deserved caning. <laughs> so we come out and Pally is a, a kebab stand waiting for a kebab. And Keeney's at him again, isn't he? Pally, you uh, just this, you this, that. I'll go and fucking speak to you, miss. You're under the thumb. Pally's like, Keeney, if you don't shut up, I'm just going to fucking drop you. And Keeney's like swaying. We're all, we're all sort of swaying a little bit like that. And none of us can see properly. And Keeney's chirping and chirping and chirping. And I went, like, Keeney, you're doing fucking my head in now. I'll fucking drop you in a minute if you don't shut up. <laughs> and he just keeps on and on and on and on like a little pecking woodpecker. And Pally just decides to throw one. So Pally just swings at him. And as he does, Keeney's like just on, on, the, on the sway going back. Misses Keeney's nose by about a quarter of an inch. And as Keeney goes like that, he catches his wrist and undoes his roller. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> So Keeney's like, shot me, you saw that, you saw that. I was like, Keeney, fucking I'm gutted he missed, to be fair. No, just crack on. And they never spoke for two years over that drunken incident. I got up next morning and thought it was quite funny. And they just didn't, decided not to speak for two years. <laughs> so so non, we didn't knock around as a, as a sort of three ball anymore. I was going to say, did you just go over there, just use as a, as a holiday? No, that was a, oh, team. Was a team. That was a team, team do. Yeah, right. yeah. How, how often were you actually going, obviously you got the party boy image, how often were you actually going out? Uh, after probably just after every game, like on a Saturday you'd go out because uh, you'd have you'd have Sunday off. Me, Pally, and Keeney would go out into town. By the time we got out after the game, it would be eleven off eleven, so we'd have a couple of hours for a couple. Of... The manager pulled us. He pulled the three of us. Like you three out again last night. We're like, yeah. He said, why are you going out drinking after the game? I'm like, well, we all live on our own. We're full of adrenaline. We can't sleep. He's like, can't you just go home and have a drink? He's like, well, we're not going to sit at home on our own drinking. It's like, yeah, but people are seeing you drinking when you're out. It's not a good look. And it's like, yeah, but we generally sit on our own and we're talking about the game that's just gone on, usually, because you're still fresh in your mind. And it's like, we only have a few drinks and, and go home. We don't go home smashed. He's like, yeah, but I'd just rather you didn't. I'm like, well, I'm sorry, but we're, we're going to go out for a drink <laughs> after the game. We're, we're single lads. We're not going to go home on our own. We can't sleep. So it's as simple as that. He went, don't think you're going to be another Brian Robson. We're like, we don't go anywhere near that fucker. He drinks us all under the table. <laughs> He's like, right, just be careful. We're like, right, okay. So he'd accept He'd, he'd accept that. That, you need, you, that you couldn't sleep after the game. You could yeah. have a few beers. I think it was when it got close to a game or you had a run of games that he wanted you to, to sort of look after yourself. Mm. And he did get more into that, but he knew, he knew that a, the, the team spirit and team bonding through a drink Important. Helped help the team more than it hindered. But I imagine everybody at every club were doing this at that time. Oh, God, yeah. 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 And, and more than just after I mean, Yeah. 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 I, I, I went to Leeds after, and I spoke to a couple of lads with the, we, when I went, went away with, with England, and they were up to 10 times worse than what we were getting up to. Yeah. But because we were under such a spotlight, uh, and the club was so big and Fergie was so strict, our, our team was reasonably... Well behaved, I, yeah. I, I would say. Still takes a bit of bollocks, sort of say, no, sorry, I'm, I'm still going out, boss. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, it, you're within the rules, aren't you? you know, we're old enough to drink. We all lived on our own. We weren't going to go home and drink on our own. So he had to realise that there, there were certain battles that he could win and certain battles that he couldn't really. I think it'd be Do worse going home and just drink, sitting in your front room drinking. Totally depressing. Yeah. Mm. Sit there you drinking. can't nick a bird, can you, in your front room? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That, that was the other one he pulled me up on, some women. He rang me mum. He rang me mum and said, Mrs Sharp, um, I'm just wondering if you can have a word with Lee. Have a word with Lee? He's not lived with us for five years. What's the matter with you? You're his manager, why don't you have a word with him? What's the problem? So you know, he seems to be getting a lot of attention from the female population of Manchester. And the problem is he's taking most of them upon their offer. <laughs> Just wondering if you could have a word with him. He's like, his mum. He's not going to listen to me, is he? So it's up to you. You're on your own. Did she have a word? And he, he, no, my mum never. He never. <laughs> Nobody pulled me about anything. I never. Just carried on my merry way. <laughs> That's one for your mum, isn't it? Not your dad. <laughs> my dad would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> Obviously, it never happened. But no, yeah. no. I've never had that conversation, <laughs> but he would have done. <laughs> it must we... have been like picking fucking fish out of a fishbowl back then. Oh, now. it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was... It, I always say to people, Manchester at the time, the, the years we played, Manchester as a city, um, the Premier League coming in, 
us being successful, it was just a perfect storm. Mm. It was the, I mean, nights out, we had our own little section of a bar. We had our own dorm and stood on the, on the, on the corner of the bar where we were to make sure there was no trouble. Um, and at the time, Man City were obviously, I don't know if they were even in our league at times. They were definitely a division below at times. So you have a couple of the Man City players stood over there with like three or four girls around them. And then a couple of our lads stood here with like, like 300. And you look over and just wave. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go, bouncers, can you go and get them four? Okay? <laughs> 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 them fucking League Two players. Just... <laughs> that was funny. Nicky Summerby was hilarious. Did, did you feel like um, Alex Ferguson were treating you differently because of that post of image? And... Yeah, but the, so, the, so the thing is, I, I had a gripe with him, right? Because Alex Ferguson was all about settling his players down and getting them married early. He wanted you to get married as soon as possible because he knew he got you home more. And, and married men obviously don't go out as much as single men. And then he wanted you to have kids, which is extra responsibility. So you took your game a bit more seriously. You went home, you looked after yourself. So... After he, threw, after he kicked my girlfriend home, who I was planning on marrying, and that was me, you know, I was in love with this girl. I went out with her from, from 12. It was a yeah. school time sweetheart and the rest of it. And, and he kicked her home. And then the, at least once a week after he kicked her home, he would come up to me and try and go, you married yet? You need to settle down. You married yet? I was like, Gaffer, you've kicked my girlfriend home. <laughs> <laughs> you've unleashed a beast. I said, we've just split up. She's just gone with someone else. I said, I'm heartbroken. I said, that's me. I'm done. I said, I'm never settling down, never marrying. I said, uh, you, you come in, you're asking the wrong question to the wrong player. I said, you fucked this. I said, you fucked it up. I said, I'm not getting married. I said, so stop asking me. Yeah. And then he kept asking me to get married. I was like, mate, you've done it. I said, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is not in my vocabulary. I'm not doing it. He took up every offer from that yeah. point. Oh, <laughs> well, this is your <laughs> fault, Gaffer. I worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get on with Ince? Yeah, I got with Ince, all right, yeah. Yeah, I knocked around with Ince for a little while. Um, I stayed at Ince's house. Uh, I, I, when I bought the new house that the manager came round to, like I said, it was on a, on a new build estate and it wasn't quite finished when I, when I bought it. Uh, I needed it like fully, fully decorated. So I stayed at Ince's house for three weeks, three weeks, a month, something like that. So I stayed at Ince's house. Um, that was an experience. The governor. So, so <laughs> the funny story. So go, Ince's all like, oh, I'm, I'm the governor and I, I run the show and this that and the other and I'm like all right yeah yeah so I stayed at his house and most days I would drive my car because I would I would go off and play golf or go do whatever I, there's no way I was going to sit in inches with, with him and his missus and the kids so some days I would drive some days I, I would jump in with him if, if I know what was coming on one day I jumped in the car with him and we've only got we've only got trackies on we've been to training we've come back he, he gets home he's not got a front door key so it's like, oh, what are we going to do? He's like, oh, I know where Claire will be. Claire will be at Angela Beers, this expensive clothes shop in, in Bramall in, near Stockport. He said, we'll go up there. He said, oh, by the way, he said, I'll take you up there. So there's a young, lovely young bird working in there. She's only 19, 20, called Gail or something. She, she was. He went, I'll go and introduce you. I was like, oh, nice one. Let's go and have a look. So, uh, so we walk up. <laughs> Angela Beers is on a main road and the shop front is there and you pull in and there's like three or four car parking spaces right in front of the shop. So we pull right outside of the front door in the middle of the shop. And as, just as we're getting out of the car, Claire is walking out of the shop with about two bags under each arm herself and then two or three shop assistants with... Like Pretty Woman. Like Pretty Woman, walking out, all done, right. Well, thank you very much, see you next week, and this, that, and the other. We get out of the car, Claire walks out and goes, where the fucking hell do you think you're going? I went, what? You're talking to him like that? I went, Incy, are you having that? Oh, so she's talking to... Yeah, she's talking to Incy. Where the fuck do you think you're going dressed like that? I went, we've just come back from training. I said, we're just going to pop in here because apparently there's someone called Gail that Incy... She went, you're fucking stepping foot in no shop dressed like that, embarrassing me. <laughs> get back in that car, get yourself home. <laughs> I went, Incy, come on. I want he to went, see Gail. He went, nah, come on, we'll do it another time. <laughs> oh. I went, fucking governor. You're the governor. <laughs> <laughs> Sent packing by his missus. <laughs> Look, I'm not having it. Did you ever meet Gail? No. Oh, Never. She, she Same as I said earlier. That could have been, 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 been it. Yeah. Could have been the one. But now Incy's... We're all the same, aren't we? We're all governors outside until we get home. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one boss at home. From, what were the from other lads when it, when it comes to Alex Ferguson? 
Alex Ferguson. There seems to be like a, an element of fear, but it didn't. It doesn't sound like that affected you as much. That. Oh no, I, well, I definitely had the fear. I was petrified. <laughs> there's, there's no way. There's no way I felt comfortable going into his office and saying, right, I'm going to have something out with him because he would just destroy me and I'd be too nervous and I'd just go under. Um, the, I think the I suppose the I mean fear in terms of right. I, he says I've got to do something. I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, on, on the pitch, without a doubt, I mean, one, one of the things that was always in the back of your head was you can't let the manager down. He's told you to do this job. You've got to make sure you do this. Uh, and there was, there was definitely a fear. There's, there's an air of fear around the club whenever you heard his voice down the corridor, whenever you heard, you come, you heard him coming. Some people would go and sit in a toilet cubicle so they wouldn't have to see him. Other people would just walk out and go into a, a different dressing room. Um, so, so the, I mean, he, he, he ruled by fear. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't a game that we played, I don't think, where he's coming and not hair-dried someone. But then the senior pros would stand up and there could be nearly a fight and you'd have the staff pulling the manager off and players pulling the player off. And, and we, we could be coming in at three and a half time, we're winning. And he, he's gone off on someone and someone's got up and gone, I'm not having it. So a lot of them stood up to him, but he, he still did have that fear. Without a shadow of a doubt, he was, he was definitely fearful. He was did an aggressive it, man. Did it ever get close enough to swinging? Oh, loads, yeah. Loads of times. Players pull, pulled apart, yeah. Do you Things think you'd have sawed through? Do you think you'd have sawed through till the end? And uh, I don't know, because he, because he comes in, he's at it, and, and then this, the argument starts, he's, and, and the players got up, and he's got up, and the jackets come off, and the players have gone, right, we're having it, and then the staff have had to pull the manager away, the players have pulled the other players away. He's, he's, he's been close a couple of times. The thing is, I know what we're laughing about, but that, the stuff with your girlfriend was nothing to do with the football, was it? So was it that in, in your head, thinking, I'm actually pissed off about this? You know, when you, you end up splitting up and... yeah. Well, yeah, you, you get angry and, and, and bitter towards him, you know, and then, and then certain things he, he bollocks you for and, and says things about you, just like, fuck you, yeah. you know, you get that. And I think, I think to a certain degree, he's, he's a bully. And, and when you're bullied, people push back in different ways. Mm. So I push back in, in a like, fuck you, I can't be arsed way. And in another way, it was a smiley and you sort of put on a brave face because you don't know how else... You're either going to go under and cry because he's having a go at you that much, or yeah. you laugh and go, well, I'm not bothered. Dealing with it in your own ways. Yeah. Like. Did he change Did when the class of 92 came? No, he was, he was still... I think he probably changed a little bit and mellowed a little bit after they'd done the treble, treble. So he was definitely getting that way a bit later on while I was there, but we were winning things. So when you're winning things, it's obviously easier to be yeah. a little bit less aggressive and passive, and, but he was, he was still, still brutal. Did, uh, did Fergie try and reel you in with the celebrations? No, that was, that was him and Incy, wasn't it? I, I did my own and then Incy and Giggs decided yeah. to do their own one, yeah. So some good ones, weren't they? Although I don't think the manager bollocked them for that. Did he not? Bollocked me for mine, yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. Did, he, did you get a bollocking for Oh, him? God, yeah, I did, yeah, every time, yeah. Scored the Attrick at Ivory on the Tuesday night and the pitch was like a carpet and I think I did a couple of forward rolls and a slide on my knees for the three goals. They went to Everton on the Saturday and the pitch was like a farmer's field. It was bobbly and dry. And <clears throat> so I was just warming up before the game across the pitch. I just said to Incy, oh, if I score today, there's no way I can slide on my knees. I'm doing my crew shit. So you'd have to think of something else then. And the game was horrible at Everton. Always, always was at Everton. And then the ball's just ricocheted over to me and I've side-footed it in the bottom corner right in front of our fans. And I've done the stupid sort of shuffle thing. I think sat on the bus after the game. It's the first week it started showing the highlight reel of all the goals from the league straight after the game. Like so nine. like quarter to six, they showed all the goals. So the manager's like, right, quarter to six, we're on the bus. So I'm like, right, okay. So I'm thinking, Attrick at Ibury on Tuesday, winner at Goodison on Saturday. Right, good night In the tonight. good books, yeah. Proper weekend of this. I'm sat on the bus, got the card score behind us. I think I'm sat with, I don't know, I might be with Giggsy. And, and um, quarter to six, Manager's not there, we're like, come on, gaffer, quarter to six, supposed to be leaving. So he gets on about six o'clock, 15 minutes late. The lad's like, Wee! give him a round of applause. He's got a scarlet face on, bits of froth, white knuckles. I'm thinking, Jesus, just won one nil at Everton. It's a decent result. I wonder what, he's not happy with someone. Comes stomping up the bus. I'm like, what can I lose? Who's he after here? <laughs> Looking round, comes straight up to me, right in my face. Shit what was all that fucking carry on after you scored, you little fucking shit? Fucking get your feet on the floor. Who the fucking hell do you think you are? Fucking stop that. And I was like, Sliding down my seat again like that. <laughs> Lads are like giggling at me at the card score behind. He walks off and they're like, what, what have you done wrong now? It's like, I don't know. I thought, I thought I'd just scored the winner. And I've been bollocked for the dance after. So that sort of got me a little bit. I thought if you've got a, got a problem with it, then 
pull me in on Monday morning and say, listen, the dancing thing, yeah. I need to have a chat about it, <laughs> rather than straight after. Yeah. Was he all right with your after though, say on the Monday morning? Would, would he forget about it and uh, just act he, normal? He, he would forget about it, but there, there were always little sort of jibes that you knew it was still in the back of yeah. his head. Was that the last time you did it then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking course not. <laughs> Because I suppose you've got the manager room at one side of you going bollocking you, but then you've got in the press the sharpest shuffle and all and all this stuff. You're like, oh, yeah, it's it good this, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it weren't even so much of the press. It, it was more like, do you know what? I'm 19 years old, 20 years old. I'm playing for probably the biggest club in the world with some of the best supporters. And I, I, I have a bit of a connection because I feel like I'm a, a bit of a fan myself. Mm. And the fans were all like, oh, we love it, we love it. And I thought, do you know what? I don't get to score that many. I'm going to enjoy the moment when I score it because it's not going to last that long. It's not going to be that many times. So I think we went to Villa away not so long after and there was a scrappy goal, goal line scuffle and I ended up like miss hitting one in or something right in front of our fans again. And I did this half shuffle type thing and I come in the dressing room after the game and Archie Knox went, I've just dragged the manager back. He was halfway down the running track trying to get at you after you scored <laughs> because he saw you doing the dance. Like, oh. It seems like he he half didn't want to like you. Yeah, that, that that's that's part of the thing that I got. Rather than rather than sort of sit down and chat to me and get to know me, he didn't like the bits that he saw on the surface, which was more which was more bravado for me, more of a more of a surface thing for me because underneath, you know, when I, when I was struggling with my game, I would I would just lie at home on the couch just staring at the telly wondering how I'm going to fix things. So I would, I would change my eating habits, I would change my sleeping habits, I would change, I would not go out for a fortnight and just stay home and not, not drink a beer. And, and, and I, I would still have a game where I would play well and a game where I would not play well and a game where I would play well and I couldn't work out. It was all obviously in my own head. Yeah. But I couldn't work out You're looking out for why. a routine change. Yeah, I was looking for something that would help me. And you were crying out for probably would, the manager just to say, are you all right? Yeah. Or what, what or, can or I just, just relax and just play your game and something um, if you if you remember because obviously Keane's it's well documented now he's the the big falling out would it have started back then do you think was there always some underlying with his relationship with uh, Ferguson I, 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 yeah I mean he, did, he definitely didn't like Keeney's drinking habits because because Keeney was a was a big drinker and I think the manager pulled him and said listen you can be an average player and carry on drinking or you can be one of the best players in the world and stop drinking then Keeney just stopped and then became one of the best players in the world. We were talking about him being my manager. We went to Portugal on a pre-season, a mid-season trip, and he bollocked us for not going, not pushing the boundaries. Not drinking. He's like, I wanted you out. I wanted, you know, prostitutes back at the hotel. You're a bunch of fannies. He's just basically saying yeah, they're all shit houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, if, I think if he wants something doing, he wants it doing right. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to go out, go out properly. <laughs> But I think Jack Charlton was a, was a big advocate of it and, and I think he saw what, what the Ireland team was like under Jack and what they achieved under Jack. So I think he was quite happy for lads to have a drink. I think he's happy for people to have a drink now. He said he still goes out with the lads that have a drink. When he was with Martin O'Neill with Ireland, he said he'd still be out till three, four in the morning, but he just wouldn't drink. He just he loved the banter with the lads and, and being around them, but he just didn't drink. Cantona must have been one of his favourites. <coughs> Cantona? Who, one of Fergie's? Oh, he was like a long lost son. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he, could do, off. he could do nothing wrong. No, because we, we all liked Cantona. Yeah. And, we knew, and we knew what he brought to the team. He brought an arrogance. He brought um, a flair. He brought a belief that if we're under the cosh, pardon the pun, he, he, would, he would produce something late on in the game when, the game, when we looked like we're never going to score for as long as we're playing like. He would come up with some. And, and he was aggressive, so, so he, would, he would get stuck in, he wouldn't shirk tackles and he wouldn't shirk responsibility. So, and he was one of the boys, he liked to come out for a beer, he liked to, you know, get on, get on the town and, and be one of the boys. So I think that they all took to him pretty quick. Were he a good trainer? Yeah, yeah, really good trainer, really good standard in training, really good finishing. When we did cross and finishing, always really good. Uh, always to stay till the end. So he was, he was, a, he was a really good pro. So do you know when he's gone fucking kung fu kicking into the crowd? Are you like, yeah, that's why, that's Eric. No, that was a bit. <laughs> no. a bit yeah, that was a bit normal. Yeah, I mean, bad week. Because obviously you've got to remember before that. Are you on the pitch? Yeah. Before that, he's been sent off a couple of times for stamping on people. I think he stamped on Moncur at Swindon. 
he stamped on someone else. So, so we know he's, he can lose his head and he, he can get sent off for, for stupid stuff, but that was just to kung fu someone. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, and then get up and drop him, left up a cut, right up. <laughs> he, went, he, went, like, he went in three guy, times. Guy he thinks he's surrounded. We're thinking, no, has he really just done that? I think the manager's got to go off on him when he comes in. There's no, I know the manager likes him, but you can't allow people to get away with doing stuff like that. But, but, but there's, a, there's a line in it and that's... Definitely a line. But, yeah, the, the story goes... Because a lot of the time with Cantona, he did give the ball away loads of time. So, so a lot of the game, we'd get players coming in like Robson or Bruce, or they'd come in and go, listen, you need to get the fucking Frenchman off. He's giving the ball away all day long. He can't keep hold of it. He's just, you've got to bring him off. The manager, oh, I'll just leave him, just leave him, he'll be fine. Keep giving him the ball. And at Crystal Palace, he'd nearly been sent off already. He'd make a couple of rash challenges. So the lads are like, get the Frenchman off. His head's gone. He's going to get sent off. We're going to be allowed to The Frenchman, a lot. You referred to him as the Frenchman. Yeah, the Frenchman. <laughs> get the Frenchman off. The manager's like, I've just pulled him in the tunnel. I've time to take a deep breath and count to 10. We need him out there to win us the second half. <laughs> count to 20. And he's, and he's promised me he's going to do something special. <laughs> so I'm like, all oh, right, okay, no problem. So we go out, 20 minutes later, keeper kicks the ball out, catches Augusta Windy, turns around to chase it, sent Ralves all over him, volleys the center off straight up the backside, three yards from the ref, red card, straight out, you're off. We're like, fucking told you. Gaff players like that, manager, fucking told you. So we, we're like, we, we've got a game in our hands. Ten men, Crystal Palace. We've got to do, it's blowing a gale. Pitch is dry, bobbly, horrible. They're kicking ten balls of shit out of us. Well, like, we've got a game on here. So the game starts again. We look over, we hear a big cheer. And there's Eric, halfway over the fucking billboards. Left upper court, right up. <laughs> Guys picking up teeth. We're on the pitch going, fucking okay, no, hell, manager's got to go. We're, we're fucking scot-free. We, we can do a bit here now. Showbelting, high-fiving at corners, <laughs> slapping each other's asses. <laughs> Fucking Cantona's going to get it. No, I'm just talking about Cantona getting sent off. <laughs> and we get in the dressing room. Kenny's like, come on, lads, dressing room now. Remember, head down. Don't make eye contact with the manager. Put your towels over your clothes. Keep your clothes dry. Because everything's going to, shit's going to hit the fan here. So we come in, manager sm smashes the door, jackets off, shirt sleeves are up. Medical bench in the middle of the room, balls and shirts to be signed. Pots of tea and coffee, plates of sandwiches. That's fucking turned over. Fucking food and pots of tea, we're getting scolded. <laughs> Lads are like that, nudging each other, watch these Cantonals gonna have it. And he starts, fucking Pallister, you can't fucking edit, you can't fucking tackle Keeney, you've not fucking laid a glove on anybody, fucking Sharpie, you can't fucking run, my fucking grandmother's quicker than you, fucking Coley, you can't trap a bag of cement, fucking history of this club, travelling fans, performance like that, you're all in nine o'clock tomorrow running your fucking balls off. And Eric, you can't go around doing things like that, so. <laughs> You are joking. <laughs> and then he carries on. Oh, because um, Gareth Southgate scored their goal. And Eric was supposed to be picking up Southgate from corners. And then he carries on. And by the way, who the fucking hell's picking up Southgate, their scorer? And everyone's like that. Um, uh, <laughs> the Frenchman. Uh, Eric Gaffer. Eric Gaffer. Well, fucking Maisie, you should have picked him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can't think of. Oh, you should have fucking got it. <laughs> that must be the point. You're like, fuck. What? It's what chance like, we got? Yeah, just one rule for him, one rule for everyone. <laughs> what did he do in there, mate? Eight months he got banned for. Yeah. Were he allowed to train or not? No, no, we didn't see him. So he just he, went... came, he came back for a month or two before, um, and then played in a. Behind, behind closed doors, it was behind closed doors. Oh, no, it, was, it wasn't behind closed doors, it was a reserve game, and like 25,000 turned up. It was, it was mental for a reserve Free game, never been, never been heard of. Yeah. And, um, and someone tackled him after about 20 minutes, and he went off, he, he tweaked a, a bit of his knee ligament, so he went off, and I think at, at half time, he came on the tannoy and, and apologised to everyone, because he had to come off early. So put him back a little bit. Oh, not apologise for the kung fu kick and the no, no. Round. <laughs> oh, okay. well, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. I've got to come sorry, off. Sorry, I've had to come off. <laughs> sorry, you've been paid your entrance fee. How so, was he with the lads? Did did any, did you have a conversation with him afterwards? Did you say like, we had just, I just went. Yeah, no, he, he, like, he how do you justify yeah, it? I don't he was, know. He was, he was never really, he was never really that talkative. To be fair, so he'd sort of say something to him and just go shrug his shoulders and mm. oh, wow, <laughs> whatever. Mm. I don't know whether the lads talked to him individually, but. There's a few things got mentioned, he's just like, oh. we, we didn't know for about a year that he spoke English. He came in and pretended he didn't know anything. <laughs> and then we found out his missus was a, was a French woman, obviously, but she taught English. 
That was, that was her subject matter. So we knew everything that was going on. The lads just didn't think he had a clue at first. So you're on the night out and he's just... Yeah, he's gone like, oh, him, oh, we're, we're like, I don't, he don't really get you. It's like, oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Seven major trophies. Which one meant the most? Uh, it'd probably be a tie between... The, the, I think the European Cup Winners' Cup in Rotterdam against Barcelona was, was huge for us. And then the first Premier League... I think the first Premier League was, was massive. I think that the, because we'd lost the, the last first division to Leeds after being a, in, a, in a strong position and then just having so many games towards the end of the season and, and not a big squad <coughs> um, killed us. And to lose that league, um, I think that sort of spurred us on to go in the Premier League the next year. But I think, I think the, the, the Cup Winners' Cup, to beat Barcelona, I gave everybody the confidence that we could go on and, and win things against big teams. Were it difficult in them last last few years at United, being in, going in and out? Was was it a personal choice? I, I want to get, I, I need a change. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I just not I'd not played regular the last couple of years. Um, I was I was sick of him bollocking me for everything from haircuts to car I drove to friends I knocked around with to clothes I wore to um, everything. He was just, he was just nitpicking everything about me. And and the, the sort of the sort of player I am as well. I, I was always nervous before every game, and I needed to. I, I'm sort of like I want to get at it and I want to go out and do well, but I'm so nervous and I'm so like edgy. I need to calm myself down, and to have him on my shoulder, knowing he's going to bollock me for every little move, just made it a hindrance more rather too than... intense and too. I just I just I wasn't enjoying it, and I like I said, I was at the biggest club with the best players. The lads were great, the fans were great. I just wasn't getting on with him. I wonder yeah. if he looks back now and and thinks that it was the wrong thing to do, the wrong wrong way to deal with you. Do you know what I mean? Because all you needed was a it's an arm around the shoulder, isn't it? And yeah, yeah. He's yeah, just misunderstood one, you. Well, one, one of the texts I got from one of the texts I got from Keeney, it's a couple of years ago. We were texting about something. Uh, I think I might have just done an article about Fergie bollocking me loads, and we were talking about something else. And then on the end of the text. He texts me about going, yeah, Fergie was a bit out of order. He was a cunt to you. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. It's nice to know that someone else <laughs> so, was thinking it as well as not, not just me. Maybe a little bit too late, Roy. But yeah, a little bit. I'll get there in the <laughs> yeah. end. Because some people need it, don't they? You know what? There's different characters in, that, in chain rooms need that type of... Yeah, and... and, be, and, I, but and you, could, you, you obviously weren't like I, that. I could, see it with, I could see why it worked with the players that he had. They were so aggressive. I mean, Schmeichel, Palace to Bruce, Ince, Keane, Robson, Hughes, Cantona... That's the, that's the spine of our team. And they're all real aggressive winners, big characters. I can see why, try and fight them, they'll fight you back and go, right, watch this. Whereas for someone like me, who's, who's not aggressive, who's more of a creative, confidence type player, I can't have someone watching every move because I'm not going to beat the full back every time I get it. I'm going to have to have someone trust me that I'm going to be able to do it two or three times a game and then put two or three good balls in, and that'll be the two or three chances that we create, and hopefully we score one or two of them. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to happen every time. So you need the, the trust and the freedom to be able to... Like the talk he managed, you know, if, imagine like if it's before manager. the game he says, right, lads, yeah. get it to Sharpie. Yeah, yeah. That would have just made you and feel a million box, dollars. Like, I'll not, you, you know that he knows that I'm going to do it at some point. And, but you have to keep trying and keep trying. Different. You go inside, you go outside, you try and race them, you try and one, two people. You have to try different things to get past certain people. And... You have to be patient with it. It's I don't know the, the full story with Beckham, but it sounds like it was the he was a knock on from you. He, he took over your mantle. You know, he, this thing with the, the cut on his eye and the hair dryer treatment. It seems to me everybody always gets streaks in their hair and that, doesn't it? You know, like pretty fuckers. He <laughs> just, just, just likes ugly players, doesn't it? Pretty boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Schmeichel, uh, yeah, he's yeah, a nick of think Manchester. He had, a, he had a bit with Bex as well, because Bex had just started seeing posh and was to and fro from London and he weren't happy with the tra travelling that he was doing. Uh, a couple of haircuts and hairstyles that he didn't like about Bex and a couple of you know, pieces of clothing he was wearing. So I think he did have it a lot with, with Bex as well, but I think Bex got himself in with a decent agent that explained to Beckham how to handle Fergie better than I did. Right. Yeah. So I probably could have handled the situation better if I'd have had someone outside because, I mean, fair play to me, to me dad. You know, I'm, I'm late teens, early 20s, earning a good wage, playing for a big club. My dad's like, just suck it, suck it up and get, get on up. with it. 
I'm like, no, but it shouldn't work like that because I should be able to be playing. I should be playing better. I'm better than what I'm doing because I'm just not getting help. Mm. And, and my dad's like, oh, you just got to get on. He likes you really. You're like a son to him. He's just tough love. And I was like, no, I can deal with tough love. I said, I just can't deal with being put down and caned for everything I'm doing. So that's just, that's not tough love. That's just not yeah. nice. Mm. Mm. Was it sh shake hands when you left? Yeah, Everything well, fine. When, I, when I left, he was like, listen, you've been no trouble at this club. Any, anytime you ever need anything, I'm always at the end of the phone, not a problem. Thanks for your service and good luck to you. It'd be no trouble apart from that time I had to come round to your house <laughs> and pick every fucker and out. I, <laughs> and, then, and then when I'd finished, I think it was when I'd finished, I did a book and I put in my book that he was a bully. And then I went to do the Player of the Year Awards at uh, Old Trafford for MUTV. And me and Lou Macari were the two sort of guests on, but there were even players come down from the awards ceremony. So we would step off set, the, the current players would go on, have an interview. We would get back on, chat about whatever. And the manager was coming down at one point. They were like, the manager's coming down, do you mind standing off set? So like, yeah, yeah. So me and Lou Macari stood over there Manager come walking down the stairs, and before he went on set, he walk, walked up, up to us both, shook Lou Macari's hand, blanked me, and walked onto the set. Oh. I was like, you fucking small man. That's just not, it's not gentlemanly. It's not, you've not let bygones be bygones and just let things go. He actually took a, held a grudge and wouldn't even shake my hand and say hello. But even then, even not recognizing the fact that, you, that it's had that effect on you, the fact that he was a bully, it's more the fact that you've called him out for being yeah, a bully yeah. than well, that's what actually, like. fuck me, I actually made him feel like this. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And have you... It's, uh, a, it's a weird, it's, it, it was, it was, it was a weird, a weird relationship that I had with him. And have you spoke since that moment? No, no. No? No. Did you feel there was a weight off your shoulders when you left then? You know, when you got into Leeds, did you just feel like a bit free? Yeah, massively, yeah. Yeah, I went to Leeds under Howard Wilkinson. And um, after a week of me being there, Howard said to me, listen, Sonny, so I paid a lot of money for you. He said, and I knew you were good. He said, but I didn't know you were that good. He said, the left-hand side of the pitch is yours. Get yourself fit. Go take people on. Get yourself back in the England team. Enjoy your football. Confidence. Thanks, thanks for coming. Injection. I was like, fucking hallelujah. Ten foot yeah. tall. He got sacked after the month. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously weren't doing that fucking well, were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got beat 4-0 at home by, by Man United, funnily enough, he got sacked. And then George Graham came in, who was worse than Fergie. Oh, no. Very quick break, gentlemen, for a message for our sponsor for this episode. Once again, Hello Fresh. I like this bit of the, yeah? Yeah, the podcast, because it makes me saliva and makes, well, gets me excited and that. We got an under-the-cosh boxing, didn't we? Special for our trips away, and we pick, picked a meal each. So happy with mine. Do you know why? Convenience. Yeah. I went for the 20 minute. Because mm. we live busy lives, don't we? Yeah. When we're, when we're on the go. On the go. Young kids flying about. Yeah. 20 minutes. I Pork, will. pee, laugh. Good. Very good. Well, if you don't know, HelloFresh provide all the fresh ingredients on your doorstep. Have you used the app? Yeah, you, it's, even, it's even easy with the app. All the meals are there, you can just scroll through. And like you said, what there's them 20 minute meals, you've got low calorie meals. What did you have, John? I had the miso beef noodles. Ooh. So easy to cook, <laughs> coming from a non chef. But they do family friendly, ultimate specials. And all the ingredients are just there with the instructions on the card. Look at that. Turn it around, photographs as well. Stop. It's idiot proof. Idiot proof. Is it on your doorstep? I think so. He I think it. I think what people want to know: Have we got an offer? Of course, or anything we've got like an that. Offer. Sixty percent off your first box, right. and twenty-five percent off your next two boxes. Two. <clears throat> so that's, that's, a, that's a good saving. Lads. So all you got to do is follow the link in the description. We've, we've, we've got it on the screen as well with a code, and um, off you pop. Get them meals on your on your doorstep. Feed all the family. I made a nan pizza as well the other day. And in case you were bothered from hello fresh hello fresh nice did you Beautiful. like it 20 minutes again lovely <laughs> she, she had to put her teeth into chew it like you have a cup tea <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that idiot proof <laughs> it was 20 minute 20 minute meal it went it went over for 45 minutes it doesn't say at the end turn the oven off <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but yeah, the link's in the description and yeah, get yourself involved. Get some, uh, the, the poor summer, you know, get back in your routine. Get some good meals inside you. Link's in the description. Like I said, 60% off your first box, 25% off your next two. Oh, thanks a lot, Chris. More. <clears throat> so you mentioned George Graham or worse. My what? George Graham or worse. Oh, George Graham, yeah. Well, George Graham was was just stuck in the 80s a little bit. He was, he was, he was just a little bit behind the times, I suppose. Psychology-wise, training-wise. Training was just all defensive man-for-man. Man. He used to play man-for-man man on a Saturday. So... I mean, at the time, we had some, some really good players and a strong squad at Leeds. I think we'd played four or five games when he came in. <clears throat> Won one or two, drawn one, lost a couple. So we sat mid-table. How he get sacked? He comes in, first thing he says, George Graham, right, lads, first things first, we're going to avoid relegation. And we all look at each other and think, okay, that's, that's not very positive. We're five games into the season, dressing room full of internationals. We were thinking, if he kicks us on here, we're looking at top six. And he's saying we're going to avoid relegation. Then he played man for man on a Saturday. So we'd have Lee Bowyer and Carton Palmer in midfield. Lee Bowyer would make a run into the box. I'd cross it in. Keeper comes out, collects it. Lee Bowyer's man's on the edge of the box cheating. Rolls out to him. He runs 60 yards without anybody going near him because everybody else is like, well, I've got my man. I'll be playing next week. I've got my man. It was just... Oh, so just let him run through. Just let him run all the way through, yeah. No one goes near him until he gets to the edge of our box the other end. I've seen it. It was bonkers. But I, think, I mean, defensively, you had everybody hunting in packs and everybody had, everyone was well drilled. You like people to be shown inside to, to where the crowded area was. So defensively, we became really good and solid. Um, and that's why when he left, there was a freedom amongst everybody. And that's when they became a really good side and scored goals, were really good defensively. That's when they had a really good run in Europe. And you must have done well that first season, though, top scorer. <clears throat> Was I? Yeah, what were about so. three? F I think five, I think it were. Five, yeah. Yeah, uh, were, they were just everybody else weren't scoring either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else was scoring. Yeah, I saw. All playing up front, fucking Lucas Radham. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Rush and Mark Aitley. <laughs> Mark Aitley brought back, he was about 38. Ian Rush was 36, 37. Although he had Rushy playing right wing back, clearing the ball from our own corner flag. <laughs> Legendary goal scorer, 37 years old, clearing the ball from our own corner flag. Um, now, Tony Yeboah, he sort of got rid of. Rod Wallace, Brian Dean up front. Uh, Carlton Palmer, Lee Bowyer in midfield. Lucas Radibian, I think we had Weatherall. He brought Robert Molinar while we were there. Nigel Martin in goal and Paul Robinson understudy. So we had some, we had a strong side. You got with Carlton? Did I go on with Carlton? Mm. Yeah, Carlton was all right. I quite like Carlton. Um, he's, he's one on his own, Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> we like, love him, don't I we? I think he's like a Lee Sharp on steroids, I yeah, think. Yeah, he's, he's on summer. I don't know what he's on. But... <laughs> we love him, but he's definitely Marmite, it would seem, with, it, yeah, with everybody we get on. He, yeah, I mean, even in training, he would, he would stand in midfield and he would try and spray balls out to wingers and they'd be like all over the place. And then he'd hit one and he'd go, Rudy! <laughs> <laughs> He was rude on it. <laughs> like, Carlton, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Rudy! <laughs> That's one out of 12. <laughs> Go and claim that. <laughs> but no, Carlton was a character. I like Carlton. I like him. Oh, well, you're in that year out, injured. Yeah, that was, that was, that, that was, that was even tougher because the, the first year I was there under George, like I said, he, he, was, he was really defensive, really dour. The team weren't great to play him. We weren't scoring goals. Um, so at the end of that first season, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing a little bit. So I went away and trained for a couple of weeks on my own before I come back. So I came back fit. And then at the end of the, end of the pre-season, the, the week before the season started, we played Forest away on the Saturday. And on the Friday, George Graham pulled me in and said, listen, you've been by far and away our best player pre-season. Let's get you back in England squad. Let's get you back scoring goals and enjoying your football again. So I was like, all right, I've sort of won him over. I've got him. Uh, and then went to Forest on the Saturday and snapped my cruise ship the week uh. before the season started. So I was like, oh, fuck, after all that, I've now got a season out. And George made it difficult for everyone that was injured. So you'd have to be in before everybody else came in for training. So you'd have to drive through rush hour. Then you'd have to do a session after they'd done lunch. So you would do 
like a three o'clock session. So you'd be finishing at five. So you'd have to drive home through rush hour. So he was just making things really awkward. And it was a real depressing, dark time to be injured for me. The thing is with that is, is, is all your punishment for being injured. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's what it felt like. It felt all the injured players were being punished. That was and and it, it was just, it, was, it made it twice as hard. We run out a lot when you're injured. At the start I did. My, 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 I'm not a massive drinker. I can drink and, I, and I, can, I can stay all right. And then I get to a certain point and I'm like, right now I need to go to sleep. And, and I reckon my, my pint limit on a good day, seven or eight pints, and then maybe a couple of shorts to see me off at the end when you've had too, too much beer up to you. And I reckon I was going out there and I was drinking 15 pints and not feeling drunk. Because of the situation. Because of the situation I was like in. It's like a trauma thing, really. Yeah, yeah, it? it was a bit of a trauma thing, yeah. So and I was drinking like 15 pints a day. Not long effect is you're in the gym on your own with the... With the alcohol coming out of yeah, your system. Yeah, feeling depressed shit. Depressed mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Depressing, non depressing, non depressing. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, fuck, this is horrible. And that was a year, a year or you were out? That was a year I was out, yeah. Did, um, did David O'Leary come in before you came back or was that after? David O'Leary was assistant to George. Right, did he take over? So he just took over, yeah. Right. Did you come back? Yeah, he was- A he different was a, player? He, he, was a, he was another one. Um, that was not a particularly favorite with the, with the players. He, uh, as assistant under, under George Graham, he never really had a lot to do because George took all training, took all authority over everything. <coughs> um, and then Paddy, we always thought, didn't really know. I mean, he played the game at the highest level for like 20 years. He had an unbelievable career. But then as far as coaching, he didn't really have much of an idea. <laughs> <laughs> so George, for an example- clueless. Well, fucking clueless. Well, fucking clueless. Just say it. I was trying to be nice, to be honest. Fuck them. <laughs> um, so, so then when, when George left to go to Tottenham, David O'Leary pulled a meeting and said, listen, lads, I don't want the job. I'm not going to have the job. We're thinking he's, he's, he's certainly to going to Tottenham with George. He won't be here much longer. And there was all talk of um, Martin O'Neill coming from Leicester. And uh, we play Leicester on the Saturday. And David O'Leary, David O'Leary in training is like my best mate. Give the ball to Sharpie. Give the ball to Sharpie. Oh, well done, Sharpie. Fucking hell, Sharpie. Different clad. The lads are like, there's something going on there. You're checking his missus or something. There's some sort of like connection between you two because your best mate talking about your weekend talking about golf is your best mate do you knock around I was like no no I don't, I don't see him I don't know what's going on and then he took over as manager played me against Leicester on the Saturday I played wide left in the first half we went 1-0 down he put me behind the front two second half uh, I got man of the match I come off the pitch and Martin O'Neill come over and shook my hand and went in different class today so I'm well played I thought oh god I hope he comes to the club and then the week after it's announced like David O'Leary's got the job he doesn't, we, we then get a forest on the, a week on the Monday after, because we're live on the, on the telly, and I'm not even on the bench. So Eddie Gray pulls me on, on after the game and says, uh, you were the best player on the pitch last week. You need to go and see him on Monday about why you weren't playing. I went, I'm fucking too right, oh well. What role was he? Was he assistant? He was assistant, yeah, he's coach. So I go and see him, I said, what's, what's the crack? Why? He said, well, um, he said, after your injury, you're not getting down the wing like you used to. He said, so I think it might be time for a change. I said, Paddy, I've just been out for a year. I said, you played me behind the front two, second half. How do I get down the wing from playing behind the front two? No, no, I'm on about evening training, you're not getting down the wing. I said, we play five a side. How do I get down the wing in a five a side? I said, I've been out for a year. I said, I'm trying to get involved. I'm trying to get on the ball. I'm excited. I'm hungry to get on the ball. I want to play. And well, I just think you need a change. And that was that. I didn't play. So he didn't play me for like three or four weeks. And then the next game he picked me for, so I'm obviously not match fit. <clears throat> he said, I don't want you to play in the reserves because you're a big match player. He said, so don't bother playing the reserves, it's beneath you. He said, uh, he said we'll just try and get you get, get away. I was like, all right, okay, thanks very much. I've had a year out. I've played like twice because George didn't play me at the start of the season. Paddy played me once or twice. Didn't play me for three or four weeks. Next game he played me, at home, Champions League, AC Milan against Cafu. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cheers, George, Paddy. Give me a fucking give me cheers, a chance, George. Give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> and who's like, playing? Well, Eddie? Harry, is it Harry Kuehl? Harry Kuehl is, is he playing well? No, that, 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 was, that was my issue with George. So when, when, when I came back after the cruise ship, Paddy, uh, 
Harry had played the season before and had a really good season. But the season I came back after the cruise ship, he, he was struggling a little bit for form. But Harry just wouldn't leave him out. And in the meantime, uh, David Platt had called <coughs> me up. He was manager of uh, Sampdoria. He said, do you fancy coming over here for a little bit? I was like, yeah. I said, but he said, how's the knee? I said, the knee's absolutely fine. I said, I've not got a problem with the knee. I said, I'm obviously uh, not match fit because I haven't played. I said, my muscle tone's probably a bit down, so I could probably do with a, a weight circuit. He's like, we'll sort all that out. He said, a half fit you here will do me a right favour. He said, you're better than most I've got here. He said, so come over, we'll get you fit. We'll build you back up. We'll put you in the team slowly. I was like, all right, I'll come over. So I went over, start of January. Um, there was already a bit of a cloud over him because they were, they were bottom three, relegation battle. He hadn't got his coaching badges and all the Italian managers were kicking off because there was some out of work with coaching badges and yeah. he had a job. And also they had a um, little Argentinian in midfield, Ariel Ortega, who was like the fans' favourite. And then he brought me in and the fans thought I was coming in to replace Ortega. And I wasn't because I was obviously left winger. Ortega's a number 10. He wanted to play us together, but... Uh, and then we lost a couple of games when I got there uh, and he, he sort of got fired off. And the old manager came back, who got the sack for Platy to take over, who was Spalletti, who ended up going to Roma. And he came back and went, listen, I don't know you. He said, I've got my players, so you won't play, so you might want to try and get yourself back Go home. back. You've been unlucky, haven't you? It's mm -hmm. Simon Good for Leeds. It's like, like how we're getting sacked. Yeah. But, but, but then the, the transfer window didn't close until mid-March. So I was luckily... Lucky enough, lucky enough to get back before the end of the season. And what was the conversation with O'Leary when you got back? Was it? I didn't. I didn't chat to O'Leary. There, there was no option about going back there. I didn't even chat to him about going back there. Um, I chatted to. There was Bradford and Man City. Man City were still. They were second division, not even in the playoffs, looking to come up to the championship. And Bradford was second in the league, in the in the championship, looking to come up automatic promotion to the Premier League. Do you just want to get playing? Yeah, I just want play to play regular. Play. Yeah. So that's when I spoke to Paul Jewell about Bradford. So I went back last last couple of months of the, the title running. And I sort of played a couple and didn't play a couple because he had Peter Beagrey there, who'd obviously had a good season. They were chasing the championship, so they'd obviously had a good season. So I was in and out of the team there, which I was, I was fine about because, you know, the team had already done, done well to get to where they went, where they'd got to. And then end of the season for promotion, they took us all to Magaluf for four days to, to celebrate promotion. I like Zola. I, like, I like the way you looked at John and you said Magaluf. Because <laughs> you thought, know, he knows well, it well. I guess, I guess it's another favourite of his. <laughs> um, so we went there and then we sat on the plane on the way back and I was sat across the aisle from Paul Jewell. He went, he said, do you, do you fancy coming full time next year? I said, well, I said, there's a couple of other people I've got to speak to. I said, but obviously you, you, you're Premier League now and... I've met most of the lads. I said, so um, you will be one of the favourites for me to, to come back to. And yeah, he said, listen, we want to sell a couple of people. Beegs is going to go and we want you to be the number one on the left and he's going to go and we're looking at bringing such and such in and looking at changing things a bit, strengthening. I was like, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely an option for me. Get on with the, get on with the lads. The Bradford, yeah, I mean, unbelievable set of players at yeah. Bradford. When you've got people like Dean Windass, um, Stuart McCaw, Jamie Lawrence, who was my roommate, the ex-prisoner. Yeah, we've we had him on. a great lad. But fuck me, he knew, he knew some characters. <laughs> <laughs> it were, it, you know Bosnich? Yeah. yeah. That sort of character. A little bit, yeah, that sort yeah. of character. Yeah when, yeah, when there's a few arms dealings going on. And <laughs> uh, but no, and the, and the goalkeepers, Aidan Aiden Davidson and, and Clarkey. Gary we've had a, we had a fair few of these on, haven't yeah. we? Have you? Yeah. Have you had Aidan Davidson on? Yeah. yeah. But it was a Zoom. Bonkers. So it, did, it doesn't really... Bonkers. So yeah. that, was, that was another one with the goal. Because I, I always knocked around with the goalkeepers. And I had, one of the lads actually had me a pair of goalkeeper gloves done with my name on, the sharp stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> after training, I used to do shooting, shooting comp uh, penalty competition. So I'd go in goal. The lads would have three penalties. And if they scored one, I had to give them a fiver. If they missed one... Oh, no, they had to score all three. I had to save one for a fiver. And I used to say, I used to take money off a few of them because I used to save a few. So they always used to say, you're, like a, you're in the goalkeeper's union. So we went to play, I think it was Crystal Palace with Bradford and I was injured. So I wasn't going to be able to play, but the manager decided to take me for God knows what reason. Second choice keeper. For God knows. 
not to let, not let, not let me uh, enjoy my weekend, I think, because Crystal Palace is a horrible place to get to as well. So I'm in the hotel and the lads are like, oh, we're going to have a couple of beers in the room. I was like, what? Play tomorrow? No, it might have been Charlton, actually, not Crystal Palace, Charlton. Uh, I said, we're playing tomorrow. I was like, no, but we always have a couple in the room. And they said, you're not playing. You're in the goalkeeper's union. Come in the room. So Jamie Lawrence is in my room on the ground floor and there's a couple of bushes outside the hotel. And we're in the first floor right, right above our room. So I'm in there with the goalkeepers having a couple of beers. Start running out of beers in, in the mini bar and the ones we bought from the supermarket. So ring down to Jamie Lawrence. Like, Jamie, send the beers up at the mini bar, throw them up at the window and we'll catch them. <laughs> so the window's open like that, right? So they've got the safety catchers of ours. So our window's open like that. The lads are hanging out with the goalie gloves on, ready to catch them. <laughs> You've got, you've got you've to do some gloves on, yeah. yeah. Grip. But the window only opens like that. It's still got the safety lock on where, where Jamie Lawrence is downstairs. You can't get the safety lock up. So he's, he's having to like, firstly, flick him up with his wrist like that. So it's not really going up. So one comes up, it's the wall. Hayley Davidson's like, yeah, yeah. Fucking got it. Yeah, what a, what a say, what a say. <laughs> Next minute, one's hit the wall, hit the windowsill and landed in the bush. Eddie Davis says, don't worry lads, I've got this, I've got this. Like, no, no, you're not, you're not, you're not. Straight out the window, straight into the bush, can't see him. I'm like, fuck me, he's got a game tomorrow. Comes out, goalie glove, can I call him? It's like an Indiana Jones, isn't it? Nutters, great lads. Yeah, great set of lads of Bradford, brilliant. Pro Stan Collymore was another one. Yeah, Stan was there. Stan was my roommate for a little while. Yeah? Yeah. He was did you get on well with him? I did, yeah. Because he's did. another one like, let's say, complex characters, but... Very complex, yeah. I mean, you, you, can, you can lose Stan in, in, a, in an instant. And he can switch from one Stan to another. But I, I got on great with him. Is I, there I was you, fine with him. Anyone you didn't get on with? No, not really. Yeah. Not really. Be Peter Beagre is the only one that's ever really... Um, we, we, went to, we went up north to play Newcastle and Middlesbrough, I think, and stayed in a hotel overnight, so we had a couple of beers after the game on the Saturday. And we were sat in the hotel. <clears throat> Beagles went, yeah, anyway, Sharpie, I'm fucking twice the player you are. I'm like, that's... How old? I said, how old are you, Beagles? 12. <laughs> <laughs> I went, why did you say... And the lads are like, you're not going to meddle him off? I'm, like, I'm not going to anything him off. I said, it's just a fucking ridiculous... I said, you're a different player to me. I said, you've got great tricks and all that. I said, but... Centre forwards are doing the cruise shits every weekend when you're trying to yeah, fake and jink, fake and jink. I was like, I'll just get half a yard and whip them. I said, centre forwards like playing with me. I said, I'm not sure they like playing with you. Do you think that was him trying to uh, justify his cell? I think it must have been. It must have been because we were the same position and he was, you know, competition for me. He was, he was, he was quite full of himself though, Beegs. He didn't like... I mean, he was quality, quality on the ball, Beegs. But my God, did he like a chop... And a, and a fake cross. Um, but even in training, we had, you know, when you get the worst jersey, young lad gets the vote, five aside on a Friday, go around, collect the votes from all the lads, who's the worst player? <coughs> Peter Beagrie wins it one, one Friday. So on Monday, he's got to wear the bib with, I'm a twat and I'm shit and everyone sign it and all the rest of it. And we've got two, we've got big bins where you put the dirty kit in for the kit man after the, fucking picks one of them up, launches it down the dressing room. That's fucking ridiculous. How can someone with my ability get voted worst player? Oh, oh Peter. Oh, Peter, like Peter, 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 Peter. <laughs> Fucking joke, mate. Yeah, <laughs> what a strong front three this would be. Off the pitch. Sharp, Ashley Ward. And I'm going to stick Carboni in there as well for a night out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hit them up to Wardy. Wardy. Tap, tap on. Wardy on that. was a good lad. Yeah. Sensible married man, though, Wardy. Just a handsome fellow, isn't it? Though, isn't it? Good you fancy him, good looking Yeah, man, I fancy him strongly. Good looking he, he were like, When I were at Barnsley, you were like, oh, I looked up to. And I just, just apart from the tattoo. You were a long way up. Apart from the shit tattoo thing on, yeah, anything yeah, else about him was just beautiful. But again, he was fucking stacked. Yeah. Like, really good trainer. We went to an army camp for three days at Catrick when we were at Bradford pre-season. Um, did the assault course, I think he came second. The army joined in with us. He did the assault course, he came second. Went on runs, they couldn't beat him. He was unbelievably fit. We got there, walked into the barracks, and there's one barracks with like 12 beds, another barracks with 10 beds. And we walked in, Benito Carbone goes, where, where do I stay? And the lads are like, oh, just pick a bed. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. So, hello, Mr. Chairman, this is not, this is not right. I can't sleep in it. And the chairman's like, no, it's all teams, it's all team bonding. 
Aidan Davidson, I can lock the door. There's the bin lads. Don't leave those doors. They're gonna try and get us up at four o'clock in the morning, something stupid, it's locked. I'm gonna knock them out when they come in. There's the piss bucket. Don't go out the door. Piss in there if you want it during the night. I'll slop out in the morning. Not a problem. Looked after I'll slop out. I'll slop out. <laughs> I'll sort it out. Proper army regime. <laughs> I'll knock yeah. him out. He took a, he took a pen. No slop out. He's all about clearing it fucking shit. No, about. nobody said I'll knock him out as oh, well. Right, they well, come in. I'll knock him out as well. <laughs> we, had, we had a young Danish kid come in, young Danish player, Jorg, Jorgen, Jordan, Jorgensen. I think he went to Coventry in the end. Uh, he, he was quite busy as well. So he'd be flying around all over the place like a little bumblebee. Aidan Davison that night bought a pair of his missus' tights, put his missus' tights over his head like that, went into the bedroom next door to this Jorgensen and went, right, you're having it, you're having it, go <laughs> in! Like trying to get his clothes off. <laughs> Kid is in tears and everything. Like... <laughs> oh, he's, he's a fucking beast as well, Aiden. <laughs> Mentalist. Uh, we didn't get the best out of him no, on that Zoom. He never, it was on the computer, so... Yeah, all oh, right, no. He's... It was a shame, really. Did you have many dealings with that? He's, he's an interesting character, the chairman. Very... Yeah, no, I, I didn't I really deal with him a lot. I mean, Paul Jewell was one telling us that he'd go in on a Friday and he was a chain smoker, full strength Marlboro's the chairman. And he'd sit there watching CFAX or Teletext or whatever it is and see different things. Then he'd be looking on his computer about what the fans are saying. And, um, and he'd have Paul Jewell sat there for like an hour and a half without even speaking to him. He'd just be sat in the office like, what do you want me for? He'd say, yeah, just give us a minute. He'd be sat across from him for an hour and a half just looking at the telly, looking at his screen. And they go, right then, uh, you got the team for tomorrow? And Paul Jewell go, yeah, there's the team. He go, all oh, right, okay. I think, uh, I think that should be the team. Oh, so and Jeff, would Jewell apply that? I'm, I'm not sure whether he would or, or whether he wouldn't, but after, after Paul Jewell left, um, Jim Jeffries came in with uh, Billy Brown, I think he was. And I really liked Jim Jeffries. And uh, he, he pulled me in, he said, listen, he said, I want to play your centre midfield. <clears throat> he, said, um, he said, Stuart McCall, as great as a player as he's been, he says his legs have gone a bit, he's 37, 38. He said he's playing so far deep that he's, he's virtually playing as a centre back and he's bringing teams on to us. He says, so I want to play you centre midfield instead of Stuart McCall. He says, but I've been told by the chairman that if I play you, I'm getting the sack. He said, so I'm sort of, caught between... Player rock, in general? Yeah. He said, so caught between a rock and a hard place. It's like, all right, I need to get out of here then. So I went on loan to Portsmouth. Um, with Graham, well, Steve Claridge took me down there on loan to Portsmouth uh, and then got sacked again after a month. <laughs> did, did, did you ever see him? There's a running theme here. <laughs> uh, he got sacked after a month and Graham Ricks came in, who I absolutely loved. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to sign for Graham Ricks. He said, but I, can't, I can only give you... I think my best wage at, at Bradford was going to be my last year. And it was going to be something like 13 and a half grand a week I was going to be on. And uh, <clears throat> at the end of the season, Graham Ricks said, I can't give you anywhere near that. He said, I'll give you 250 grand a year, five grand a week. I said, all right then. I said, I said but put me on that for the first year, but if I have a good season, you've got to like, look after me after that. He went, not a problem. He said, oh, he said, we can double it, treble it the year after. He said, not a problem. So I went back to the chairman. Oh, I got the solicitor to ring the chairman. I said, tell the, tell the club, they owe me 650 grand, I think, for the year. It worked out about 13 and a half grand a week. I said, tell the, ask the chairman if he'll give me 100 grand to leave. I said, and the club will save half a million quid. I said, I'll, I'll go to Portsmouth. <clears throat> and he came back to this. He said, no, nah. he said, you're staying. Fuck yeah, and you're not going to play. So it cost the club 650 grand rather than let me go and let me play somewhere else. And we, how bothered were you? Oh, I was like, that's me done. So I, I said, fuck you, I'll pick the money up and mm -hmm. then I'll just leave. So I jacked it after that. It's like, if that's the way football's going to be, then... Understandably. I'm out of it. I don't understand why you'd make that decision. There's, there's, no, there's no reason, rhyme or reason to it, apart from he's just been an absolute tosser. I think even... And I know you want to play and stuff, but even t t throwing that money, like, like parting with that money, yeah. looking back, it's probably, a, is it the right thing to do? I weren't bothered. Five, 500 grand. Yeah, I weren't, I weren't, bo I weren't bothered. I was you just, just wanted like, to play. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take five grand a week. 
give us 100 grand, which is what, a couple of grand a week. So I was, was going to get a seven from 13 and a half. So I was nearly half in my wages just to go and play. Yeah. But you go into somewhere with a manager that you know with you it, want to work with, although I'd probably get sacked in a month. But I'll probably get sacked. Right? Yeah, which I think you probably <laughs> did. Best thing that to fucking there, Rick's that. I think you probably did. You got till Christmas. <laughs> I think he did. I think he... Uh, well, I think... Um, yeah. Harry Redknapp was uh, director of football, weren't he? So I think he was like stoking the fire behind Graham Ricks to try and get the job. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think he was far behind Graham Ricks. But, you know, if Graham Ricks had got the sack, then maybe Harry would have been a good manager for me to play for as well. So at that point, we just... After this season, I'm done. Yeah, I was done. I, I think um, I think one of the one of the last things that happened was I think we ended up Bradford went to Barnsley, I think, and I, and I, I was having a shitty game and I was getting abuse from our fans, from their fans. Uh, my mum and dad were in the stands, and I got out, I got home, got in the dressing room, got in the players' lounge after, and my mum said, "You sure you want to carry on doing this?" I was like, "Well," so I think it's this summer to have a think about it because I'm not enjoying it. And what age were you here? 30, I think I'd have been coming up to 32. Birthday's, Still quite young birthday's end of the season, so I would have been 32, yeah. Who's your favourite man in football? Um, favourite man in football? Oh God, that's a tough one, really. I've had some great lads in dressing rooms. People like Robbo, that's just been an unbelievable player, and an unbelievable captain and leader and winner and drinker, and he just does everything so well. But he was never really someone that I knocked around with. And then you have people like Keeney and Pally and Giggsy that, that I've been mates with and knocked around with. But then you've got people like Dean Windass and Jamie Lawrence um, that are maybe not the high profile, but the characters of them and the stories and the times that you have with them are just unbelievable. He's just different level than Dean Windass. Oh, phenomenal. I mean, I shared a room with Dino for a while. I shared a room with Jamie Lawrence for a while. Um, they're just genuine, down-to-earth, salt-the-earth guys that are, we're all just enjoying the best living you can ever do. And you're just bending rules, breaking rules, going out drinking when you shouldn't, like schoolboys and, and schoolboy fun. But they're all top players as well. And maybe not your Brian Robson or your Roy Keane or your, or your, or your Ryan Giggs, but as far as characters and laugh and banter. And I still speak to, to quite a few. David Johnson's just been over, lad, went, went to Forest. He's just been over, I was at United with him. Ian Taylor's here from Villa, I'll, I'll meet up with him for, for a beer. Dwight York, I spent in the year we went to Magaluf with Bradford. Um, Villa were there and I ended up spending the night with Dwight drinking. He was talking about Fergie and what he's like and what it's like at United and six in the morning, I'm like, Yorkie, <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> done. I'm done. See, I, that is one place I did not think Dwight, Dwight York Street, Magaluf. Oh, he loves it, doesn't he? He was with the Villa lads, all the Villa lads. But I ended up, me and Dwight ended up, I, I, I left the Bradford lads, he left the Villa lads, we ended up going somewhere. And at six o'clock, he's just pecking my head about United and Fergie. And then at six o'clock, I went, Yorkie, I'm done. He's like, yeah, it's been, it's been a good night, mate. He said, um, he said, thanks for all the info. He said, I, I didn't tell you. He said, but I checked to Fergie last week. He said, I'm supposed to be meeting Barcelona at nine o'clock in the morning. He said, well, I think I'm going to give that a miss and I'll just sign for United. <laughs> I was like, you tell me now, at six in the morning, you're supposed to be meeting Barcelona at nine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's more York than I expected. <laughs> that's the... So it's, it's, hard, it's hard to pick one out too far. I, can't, I don't think I could pick one, one person out. But Robbie Blair person. came to Doncaster and he was 40. And I, but I wish I played with him when he was at his... Robbie Blake. Robbie Blake. Oh, he, he was a player as well, Blake. I mean, Blake's feet. You know, on his day, he was untouchable. He was, he was unplayable. When he has that fake to, to whip it top corner and then just drags it, his fast feet, rocket shot, he was incredible. But again, mentality, not, not, he's not, nowhere near the mentality that the top boys have. Ability-wise, he has. <clears throat> just different brain. Do you think it, like, more, a lot of careers go up the way? You will probably started and... Did you feel as come down the way? Yeah. But there's only one way down from United, really, isn't there? With, yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah. And, and it did. And, and, and I think you, you see, you don't realise what you've got while you're at United, especially I don't. I mean, coming from Torquay, you do when, when you get there. But when, then, when you come sort of part of the furniture and you've been there for a number of years and you've won things, you just think that's the way that football is. That's the way the Premier League is. 
and you go away from United and you see how the clubs run, the teams run, trainings run, uh, people's attitude towards training, towards games, towards timekeeping, towards respect for managers, it's all done differently. I didn't realise that the pre every Premier League ground wasn't full until I left United. I thought every Premier League ground was just full every week. And it's not. It's just when you play for United, it is. Yeah. yeah. You don't realise. And, and, and the behaviour. You know, everybody goes, oh, you, you must, have been, must have been carnage when you were at United. No, it wasn't. It was quite sensible. Yeah, there were some big days out where the lads went out at one o'clock and it got a bit messy and someone got punched or someone fell over or some, some shenanigans happened. But generally, it was pretty well behaved. It was pretty sensible. Everybody had a drink. Everybody knew when the limit was. Everybody went home at the right time. You hear stories from some of the Liverpool lads when they were playing and some of the Leeds lads when I was there, what, what they were doing. It, it was just on another level. And you can see why... We had Brian Robson and Alex Ferguson to toe the line for everyone. Everybody else had, well, at least we had Carlton Palmer and Eddie Davidson and, you know, crackpots in the team that everyone, go on, egging them on. And they're like, go on, do that, do that. <laughs> it must have been quite an eye opener. It was, yeah, it was. It's mental. When Once you got, you got I mean, there. I keep going back to AD, but AD is one of the craziest players I've ever played with. He's, when you stood at the toilet doing a piss on a night out and he comes from behind you and picks you up with one hand like that. And you're still doing a week. You're still trying to do what? I'm doing this stuff. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's just different. It's different mentality. I disagree with John about you starting up United and working your way down. I'm saying United's here, but Love Island's. You've, you've gone full circle, man. I'm sure lucky cunt, that's why. It's, that's why the only reason I'm here. We want the Love Island stuff. Yeah, the, How did that come no, about? The, the Love Island was. Um, I'd got, in, I'd got into TV a bit, uh, I'd come out of football and not, I'd been to Iceland and played, which was, which was a bit of a bizarre situation. And then come out of that and, and I, I was doing little bits, of, little bits of TV here and there, punditry more than anything. And then the agent rang me up and said, there's a, there's a show called Celebrity Wrestling. And they had all these different physical games. One of the lads has, uh, has, has broke a finger, so he's got to pull out. So do you fancy going down? You, obviously they've been training for two weeks, you haven't. We've just not come out of football, so they're expecting to be off. I was like, yeah, I'll have a go. <laughs> so I went down there, and uh, the first game I had to start playing was they had, a, they had a boxing ring, and they had a big circle on one corner, a metal circle, and a big metal circle on the other corner. And me and this other fella, six foot four, bodybuilding gay guy, who was an interior designer, did Jordan's house and did someone else's celebrity's house. We had to wrestle over a medicine ball, and whoever could put the medicine ball in the ring like a basketball hoop, won the point. You have to get first to three. So we're wrestling in this fucking wrestling ring and I end up trying to pull it off him and I end up like lifting him off the deck with this ball and I fall onto the deck and the medicine ball falls out and he falls on top of the medicine ball and I pop, I break two ribs. So I'm on the floor like can't breathe, they all think I'm messing around. I'm like, no, I fucking can't breathe, can't carry on. Go to the hospital, yeah, you got two ribs like this broken, sit out, just sit with the team. So I sat with the team. At the end of that, they come up to me and went, listen, you've broke two ribs, you've not moaned, you've not complained, you've cracked on with the team. We're doing this thing called Love Island. Five weeks in Fiji, six boys, six girls. Do you fancy it? Oh, do I? Do <laughs> I? Fucking strap me up. Do I? <laughs> Where do I sign? I'm having it. I mean, I even fancy... Uh... Six lads and two women. I think, <laughs> I think I've got a chance. A chance. <laughs> so, half the lads on there, you probably would in a, on, a, on a dark night. You know what I mean? <laughs> Callum Best and Frank Cosgrove, some good-looking lads on there. <laughs> so that was that was pretty much it. Went on, went on to the Love Island, Fiji for five weeks, which was pretty boring to be fair. They only let us get pissed, I think, three times in five weeks. One of them, which was my birthday, so we got absolutely steaming on my birthday. Um, I met Abby Titmus, ended up going out with Abby Titmus for a while after the show, uh, who was an absolute lunatic. Uh, I always remember the, a, the video. I had a mental couple, of, mental couple of months with her and then was like, right, this is not for me. And she went her way, I went my way. And I remember, is it Danan? Danan? Danan, Danan Paul Danan. Is that and the, he had the meltdown. Yeah. Yeah. Were well, he on a Hollyoaks or something? Hollyoaks, yeah. So, so he was just about to go into rehab for a... a cocaine and marijuana addiction and he started to go cold turkey on the show <laughs> <laughs> so you can just imagine I, I'm no programme producer but it's probably not the best time for Paul was it 
Yeah. Well, every, every afternoon, uh, Paul Danan, it's medication time. <laughs> it's like one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Go on, you crazy cat. <laughs> Go on, Paul. There's a couple of lines and a split in there for you. <laughs> Comes out a different guy. <laughs> Well, he was he was nearly fighting because he, he was obviously a, suffering with a bit of paranoia and so I, I, I sort of spent most of the time on there with uh, Callum Best and, and Fran and we'd be chatting away stood here he's over there on the sunbeds chatting to the girls Paul and Alan we're sat on the decking area just chatting and we'd start laughing at something and he'd be like what 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 are you saying about me what are you saying about me? we're like about you well you're the last person we're going to be fucking talking about there. That's, <laughs> there's like over there you think we're talking about you. <laughs> but he was uh, he was entertaining. He was. Is this like the first Love Island ever? Yeah, the first one ever. It was. Yeah. yeah. Can you not? Can you remember it? Oh, yeah. I don't. Uh, it's not my sort. I'm, I'm I'm Coronation Street man. I know it. Viv, I'm gonna have to Google all this Love Island. We'll, we'll watch yeah. it. People, it people, people it. wall upon that. No, he's the man to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking look at me for? No, I mean on the show, like Rebecca Lose. Rebecca Lose. Oh, oh me, yeah. It was. She wanked a pig off as well, didn't she? Yeah, he was still every day. On, on that farming Can show. Can I have half a chance? <laughs> <laughs> Who won it? Frank Cosgrove won it and Jane Middlemas. Me and Liz McClellan came second. Nothing for second, 50 grand for the winner. That would have been nice, Cash wouldn't prize. it? How did you win it? Just last man standing. You got voted, public vote. Public vote. So, that, so the last two days, I had to go on a date with Liz McLaren and then, a, and then on a date with Jane Middlemas and Fran had to do the same. And then the public voted for the favourite. Because oh, a lot of not players have not, a lot of lads have not come off great on the old... Uh, Celeb, like... Jungle. Shows jungle. Reality jungle. shows, yeah. It's all in the editing. You gotta, they gotta, that's what you've got to be careful of, the editing. What, what they put in, what they show, what they don't. I had a really good reception when I come off. Because so I like, found that like being famous on another level. Because obviously football fans obviously knew me. But then it was like, I, I stayed in a hotel. The night we got back, I had to stay in London in a hotel because I was on Radio 1 talking about it the next day. And I, I was outside the hotel waiting for the car to pick me up at half six, quarter to seven. And two middle-aged women walked past and went, oh, it's you off Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've made it. I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> Still no, no, no one's mentioned the football. It was like, oh, you're famous. I was like, yeah, I'm famous, properly famous now. <laughs> A new level of lady. Yeah. <laughs> what, Are you glad you went on? Yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it's all an experience, isn't it? I mean, it, it, was, it was quite boring for a while, but, um, and I was wary about the, the reception I would have when I come off. But when I come off, um, I couldn't have wished for, for a better reception, really. It was, it was really good. Fuck me, seven major trophies. I'm like a cat with its first ball of cream talking about Love Island, man. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do anything different? Uh, I don't know. I mean, h hindsight's amazing, isn't it? Um, I think the only thing I would ever like to go back and do differently is with Fergie. Just how, how the situation was with Fergie. I'd, I'd have liked to have gone in and, and chat to him and see exactly where he was coming from and what his point was. Um, but like I say, at the time I was just petrified of him and I didn't have anyone as far as an agent. My, my dad was probably a little bit scared and a bit in awe of the situation. Um, like, so that's because you've got a better understanding, like you said, in hindsight, a better understanding of the situation afterwards. Yeah. Best player you've ever played with? Uh, it, it'd have to be out of two, Robson and Gascoigne. I think, I think Robson, week in, week out at United, was just incredible. But it was always sort of fair. And then, and then Gaza. <laughs> Played with Gaza with England. And he was just absolutely phenomenal. The, the guy was most nervous before any game I've ever seen. Edgy. Couldn't sit still. Couldn't sleep two nights before a game. Just, want, just wanted the game and wanted to be in the game and play the game so much. Hated playing with rubbish players. I've played in charity games with him a couple of times. He canes people that can't pass. They're, they're, they've paid fortunes to play. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fucking dude, he just canes them to the face and then like shoves them out the way, tackles them. He just he hates playing with shit players. <laughs> Paid three um, grand for told you shit by, by Paul Gascoigne. <laughs> but as, uh, Money well spent, I think. <laughs> as, as far as a player, I mean, just drifted past people like they weren't there, nutmeg people in situations where you just thought, how have you done that? was just phenomenal. Best <laughs> practical joker? I mean, Aidan Davidson was always the... 
Ed and Davidson would we'd be on a coach going somewhere and drinking and we'd have no toilet and he'd piss in a bottle and drink piss and drink someone else's piss and then stick a Johnny up his nose and have it coming out of his mouth and be like, that with a fucking <laughs> Johnny to his nose. And he'd be like, how the fuck do you it's know? Talent, you know? It? How do you know you can do that in the first place? <laughs> what first starts you off? Sticking a Johnny, snorting a Johnny up your nose and then oh. uh, like flemming it out. <laughs> how do you do that sort of thing? <laughs> We went to the Open. We went to watch the Open. Me, AD, Clarky, and, uh, and a mate of mine. And we drove down. He, Clarky's doing Soccer AM live on the telly. I'm driving the Range Rover at the time. We've all got bottles of beer. He's like, yeah, sure. We're just driving down with the beer. I'm like, no, I'm not driving with a bottle of beer in my hand. Then we get there. AD Davidson has been to the toilet, logged one in a, some toilet roll. He's got it folded down like the top of a banana. So just the turds sticking out <laughs> like that. He's putting fucking someone at the back of someone's backpack as they're watching the open. <laughs> it's like someone's got a turd in the back of the backpack watching the open. But it looks then, like then, a banana. Yeah, and then he stood at the door of the, of, the, of the shop, pretending to be security. Yeah, can I have a look in your bag, see what you've got? You've got the seat. Everyone's like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure about that. That's not going to fit you. I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, Ke Gary Kelly's another one. He's, he's mental, Gary Kelly. I can do an impressions of the manager. Dean Saunders, he'd be another one. Dean Saunders, stand up comedian. Eh? You must have had Dean yeah, on his yeah. time. Absolutely. Stand I mean, he used to do 20 minutes stand up before training every morning at Bradford. Doing impressions of Paul Jewell and Chris Hutchins, the assistant. He'd do impressions of them all, fucking telling jokes. One of the funniest men ever, Dean. Well, they're much like uh, you know, United, well, they're much shitting in wash bags and all that sort of carry on, no. which. No, there was nothing like that at all at United. No, no, like, no, no cutting up socks, no, no burning clothes, no. There wasn't. There wasn't. When I got there, there was no, not even a, a induction ceremony where you sing a song or something like that. There was nothing like that. We had it. At, we had it at Leeds. We had it for the Christmas, for the Christmas bonus. The kids, the apprentices, who all the all the apprentices had two players each, so they only had two or three players to look after. Um, and at Leeds, me and Gary Kelly had Nicky Byrne who's in Westlife. So he was a trainee at Leeds and he was our boot boy. So they had a courtyard at the training ground. All the kids had to tell a joke or sing a song to get the Christmas bonus off the lads. And we all had eggs. Everybody had like a dozen eggs. So if you shit, you get pelted with eggs. If you're probably going to get pelted with eggs. And Nicky Byrne stands up, Westlife, isn't he? Like he stands up, belts his song out in this courtyard. There's goose pimples stand up on your arm and on the back of your neck, like, fucking hell. The lad's like, fucking egg here! <laughs> Too good. <laughs> too good. Too good. Too good. Too good. Sorry, son. You're too good. Fucking egg for that mistake. Well, cheers, mate. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks Thanks really enjoy that. Brilliant. Do you, still, do you still get the dance moves out every now and again? Very rarely now. Yeah. Well, not even the a bird skin, skin full of beer, maybe, but... <laughs> get a bird in, dance around the flag and... Yeah, it's don't get out well in golf, does it? They look at you like, you're fucking, what are you doing? Especially when you bogey the next. It fucks you up a bit. <laughs> No, but thank you very much for coming on. Ah, no problem. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. This is Trip to Alicante, so, so fucking top, man. <laughs> From the Javier Palms Golf Club in Alicante to a working men's club in Barnsley. Where did it all go wrong? Back with a bump. Right. What an episode? Straight in the, the first, top ten. First, first one back. This might come as a surprise. Straight in the top ten. That. I'm going Just for sheer. A lot of the stuff I hadn't heard. You know, like. Because he's a bit of a... Aloof. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't really... He's not Off on the, the... radar. Yeah, you know, I've never seen him on other yeah. podcasts or anything else. Because nobody puts in the work that we do to... to fly out. Fly out. To Alicante. Yeah. Have a, the, the afternoon on the beach, get up next day, drive to him yeah. an hour, drive back, get back on the beach, we have a few beers in us, get up the next day, drive another hour south... To record with Mark Halsey. It was a slog, wasn't it? It and was. Then get back, uh, and then get back on the beach, and have the next day on the beach, and then fly home. Yeah. That what is your fucking no, no, No other podcast will put that kind of effort in, I don't think. <clears throat> I think we need to say a special thanks to Matty as well for all the, the driving. Yeah. Was, yeah. There's been, there was times when I thought, rather you than me. Wrong especially on that road. back road. Yeah, dirt, dirt tracks. And then there was ports. a the thing he wasn't they? The standoff. <laughs> a small Spanish road. English standoff, weren't there? <laughs> he he reversed to the wrong side of the road and oh I was, yeah, I I was he, gave, he gave up at one point. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I'm sure door open. <laughs> like he was just going to get out. No, that was me. <laughs> I'm going to walk, I'm walking, man. <laughs> See it up at the venue. But I, I, it back down in the end, I looked, I thought, yeah, you won. In terms of uh, like top tier names as well being discussed and and being able to tell them to, you know, when we when we do some bigger names, sometimes you feel like the bit guarded. Yeah, and like just not so forthcoming with them tales. You've got to dig a bit more, but sharper. Just getting yeah. the good stuff out. I tell you what, like we've had quite a few lads who've played for us, Alex Ferguson. And he's the first one who's had a not the best difficult experience. relationship with him, yeah. I would say. Yeah. Which, were, which were also very interesting. I thought and you I, hit the nail on the head, but saying that sim- possibly similar to that Dick Beckham relationship that he had with him later on. Yeah. And I know Sharpie says about because he were weren't as serious, he didn't see himself as being serious. He liked he liked you know doing his hair and having a bit of a laugh and a joke. And but that were how he he played his best football. But that. What surprised me was that people go on about Ferguson on a personal level, like getting to know them, knew these players inside out. Sharpie wasn't like that, really. Sharpie needed an arm around the shoulder. Yeah. But it just wasn't recognised. Yeah. He just misjudged the type of character that he was. Mm. Do you know what I mean? With his party boy. Yeah, when really he just needed a bit of love. Yeah. I wonder if he changed, because this is like at the start of Sir Alex Ferguson's success in it. Those first talking mid nineties, aren't it? Yeah. Is the first few years of his success at United. Then, I wonder then if he, the same with Beckham, didn't he? But yeah, but then but unbelievable how you actually got there in the first place. Who Sharpie? Like just went to Torquay for a crack, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? His uncle knew bloke at supermarket or something. Well, he's living <laughs> the dream out there, isn't he? Could you do it? Just bugger off to Spain. Mm. I'm back to my usual regular attire now. I got a special outfit for that podcast because what was it? Oh, yeah, a few good shirts, didn't he? No, we had a few new shirts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not good ones, just new ones. <laughs> they weren't good. Where did you pull them from? God. Flowery. Yeah, yeah, I like a flowery number. But I had a plain one for the podcast because I were a bit, I had a bit of anxiety about what what you should wear at a golf club, like especially like, a, a, you know, I don't like the the all the official behaviour around a golf club and then not knowing where you go, you know, this Spanish club where he's a pro. Should have just asked us, mate. Would have, would have helped you through it. He's a pro. <laughs> it's good to talk. So, Will you have you through it if you're <laughs> feeling anxious? So I thought I'd best get just some, some regular... But he looked an absolute million clothing. dollars. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. We got there in end, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we got there. But uh, So yeah, that's the that's the effort that we're putting in to get these podcasts out. Yeah, so it's good to be back. Yeah, and like we but, said, we put these mm. intros... And now outros. So these are going to be tough for me. Outros. Because you can't remember the I can't episode. remember a lot of the episode. Yeah. You've normally got a free pass, haven't you? Because you don't want to make out like you don't want to kill it for the viewers. But yeah. really. I'm fucked now. You just can't remember. <laughs> yeah. So if we could get some notes written up yeah. on the podcast. Especially if we're doing it like a month later. A month and a half later. You could write what them I did like yourself. was that he, him and Keane were mates. Like, you can tell they were good mates, can't you? Yeah. Make you watch. I know. But I think he, I've heard him tell it. That surprising that what Keane were like back then. I bet he was a nightmare on the drink. He said he got he was a bit of a nasty drunk. Yeah, no, did he actually say in the podcast that he nearly hit Keane himself? Yeah, when he had when uh, Gary Pallister had a bit of a do with him. He said, I were ready for a tin himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't look like a fighter, does he? No. Uh-huh. So, yeah, no, it's good to be back. How long... Been three it's a long time off. I've, I've, yeah. I've missed it. It seems to be the last couple of weeks that we've had the more messages. Like, starting off, hi lads, when you're back to. Take it piss now. It's, yeah. It's it seems nice to be every, though, every break. It's nice we wanted, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's nice just to, that people want us back. Who was it next week? Scott Laird, I believe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Your eyes then. I know. You know what I'm like with names, Scott Laird. Yeah. By the way, it goes into my top five. Really? Yeah. The Wesley stuff. Wesley. I think it's, we've um, got a new super fan. Number one super fan. Lady. Lady. Yeah. He said, lads, I've been here from the start. <laughs> Since they were Patreon. Yeah. He was, he was a Patreon. I know. Yeah. Five five quid and all about it. Uh, the, the best Patreon for me was when we were sat talking to Stewie Downing. 
about the podcast, he's like, you don't need to sell it to me, lads, I'm a Patreon. <laughs> and as he said it, Fabian Brandy episode landed on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you always know within the first five ten minutes if it's going to be a good episode, and with with Scots you do, you do. I you think know. we knew before we we even energy uh, levels. Yeah, I think we, when we just turned up straight away, and then when he's are we talking about the Wesley stuff? Like are, are we still in the outro for the first one? Or you or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've not stopped. I know, but we've started <laughs> but we, we dive, and we're still going. We dive, we're just we're di- about next we're diversing. <laughs> what yeah. else has been happening? It's a good one. There Graham must have been loads happening. You thought so? What, what? America? Yeah, I went on holiday. You've been on holiday? We all have. No, I, I haven't. Have you not? Uh, puppy, weren't it? Oh, I'm, how are they? How are you, Dad? <laughs> we had two oh, pu- can we get that picture up, by the way? Have you seen it? It's, it's nice to see that side of you. I don't. I don't think there's all wrong with that. The big man was tired. Put him in my papoose. <laughs> Walking around with What's me. What's your papoose? <laughs> I've got a dog papoose. <laughs> I can't walk too long when the puppies. It's only got the only got little legs. Could you not just give it one of them? <laughs> eh? Not oh, that heavy. I've got, I've got a sandwich or some chips, <laughs> fish and chips in my hand, Anna. Can you imagine if John just saw another bloke, six foot? What are you? Four, four five, walking down the street with a, with a little dog in a papoose. I think you're right. What would I it? think you would have something to say. It is the cutest dog you've You'd ever seen. You'd be saying, though, what is that? I think, I think the C-U-N-T would come out. <laughs> Do you think? Look at Look that, at cunt. That, yeah. <laughs> in his I papoose. Have that, I have that. All right, so we had, we had two puppies. Stress that, man. So, uh, do you do this regular with the papoose? Got, we've got little Percy. It's <laughs> blown your mind, hasn't yeah. it? <laughs> uh, we'll take Papoose on a walk because I can't walk with other two dogs. I don't think it's needed. Too far. But what if you just go into the shop, like, not even taking for a walk? Like, what, what, what's what's dog called? Percy Parkin. Percy. Percy. <laughs> so you just like, come on, Percy. Like, yeah. And just put him in, him in the Papoose and take no, him shop with you. No, just, if just, just for a bit of company. Out. Just no, for a bit of company. Nipping out, just leave him at house. And what do you do with a Papoose when you're walking? Do you just have it hanging? Well, it's a nice Papoose. I think it's a nice fashion that it says in it. It's a lovely colour. <laughs> a lot of change, beautiful. With his little face popping out and his little, his little <laughs> paws. I think you would fun. definitely have something to say. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the dog's fi- dogs are fine. All I need is for him to start having bigger shits and then I can get away with dropping one myself right out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I can... <laughs> Just blame Percy. Yeah. You know, for the skids down back at the toilet. Oh. Percy's been on again. Uh, yeah, Percy parking. You boil the kettle for them, don't you? What? The skidders. Yeah. Didn't you not? No. Nah. I've never had to get to a level where I've had to boil a kettle for get rid of my skid marks. <laughs> I always, not. I always do. Do you, do you know? Do you pop kettle on before pop you go kettle, to the toilet? Yeah, and then it's done. And then straight down. Straight down the, the lava. Tell you what, the stubborn. Again. If you leave them probably more than 36 hours, oh, oh, wow. it takes some getting shifted. I, I can imagine someone coming round visiting, right, and Katie's in the kitchen, and, they get, and click goes, and they go, oh, we're making a brew. Like, no, John's having a shit. <laughs> A cup of tea. <laughs> no, we're using all the water. You have to do next boil. <laughs> <The> reload. <laughs> so we got Scotty next week. Thanks for uh, tuning in for the first episode. Back. Got some good guests lined up for this series. We always have Chris. Always have. Always have a good mix again. Mm. No good praises. Again. A self few praise. surprises. Self praises. No praises. A few surprises. Episode number one. Fourteen more to go. This is going to take us till Christmas. Oh. Strap yourselves in, lads. Are we uh, getting them in? How do we sign off these sign offs now, Lionel? Oh, how do we finish? Yeah, yeah. Cool. we've never done a goodbye before, have we? Just cut it there, man. So thanks, thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. You're not saying bye. <laughs> <laughs> they always are awkward, though, aren't they? <laughs>